Always. I forgot it last week, too. I feel terrible. Fortunately, it doesn't show up in the recording. It's a live-only tool. So my fuck-ups that way are not recorded for all eternity. Or at least two weeks by Twitch standards. You listen to this soundtrack every time you play Shadowrun. It's so good. The Blade Runner one? Yeah. I love Vangelis. He's all right. I mean, some of his stuff, um, I'll, I'll be honest, I can do without. Some of it is just, I don't know, the whole album is brilliant, but some of it just, I can't listen to it and enjoy it. It's just noise. You know, it may have been perfect in the movie, but... But yeah, stuff like this where he blends it all together and he gets that... I mean, he gets the tone just fucking right. Like, he really does. There's no question there. Um, I think this one is called Rachel's Song. This one's Memories of Green, but it's similar. All right. All right, that's what I was looking for. That up. Is it going to be too loud? Nah, it's going to be too loud. I hate the Twitch homepage, man. Like, all the stuff they feature is just crap. That air conditioner is just chugging as hard as it can. Got like 90 degree weather down here in the ACs. 90 degree Fahrenheit weather, and the AC's pumping as hard as it can. I think we're still sitting around uh, 20 degrees, 30 degrees in here. Somewhere between there. That's a big range, I know. Uh, got all that tweaked. All that's good. And final check, sound check. Cool. The camera pans against each of your faces, frozen in the moment, the chaos erupting all around you. It pans against the horses, ferocious, roving over the hills, trampling the one henchman that you may have feared in all this, who proved to be nothing but a footnote under the crushing hooves of the passing horses as Rigor and Markham stand resolute in the back of the wagon bouncing across the hills the camera pans against the bodies on the ground showing Serena amidst other members of the Iron Throne slashed and cut down Doc standing in cover aside the brick the rocks jutting from the landscape and finally we pan in upon Aldous on the other side of the soldiers as we see Tomas's head lying rolling off to the side a geyser of horrifying blood shooting from his stump. And as we pan back, we see the crazy machinations upon which rides Resvin, and in the background, silhouetted against the sunlight in the hills and the smoldering flames of the carts in behind, we see the floating horror that is the foot of the Iron Throne. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode, and who cares to regale what happened last week on Hunters? You guys want me to give this a crack? Well, don't all you jump in at once. Uh, I'm in on it. Hold on. I'm trying to keep the body back here and find that dude. All right, so here we go. This You're is, clear. Uh, this we is... can't hear anything else, eh? Just so you know, we can't hear any of the background noise. Your, oh, mic, okay. your mic's doing a great uh, job. All right, so uh, so last week on uh, on Hunters, we were heading out with Markham and Rigger. It was around noon. We were taking the East Road, known for being a shortcut but dangerous. Um, we know that the uh, the party that was heading out was loaded with all their uh, with all the gold. Um, Burgess is in the caravan, and the East Road is leading to Masoner's Bridge and Sunset Hill. 
Uh, Markham gets us ahead of them, and they're about to follow the wagon. The wagon train is getting attacked by another group. A um, uh, response to attack comes from the lead. There are two mages, Burgess and someone else. Uh, in the middle wagon sits the leader. Uh, they definitely level everybody else and then move along their way. Um, and then, to quote for quote, this is exactly what I write down. We blow some stuff up, we get in a huge fight, dude has horns and flies and kicks some ass. Still some dude standing, all this is hanging on by a thread, Serena is still ready, Rez is riding a walking crossbow. And now that's where we're at. I, it, it's not, I, I do not hold a candle to uh, our former teammate in terms of uh, a good- But he's dead now, so yes. you did a great <laughs> job. This is, as, this is what's going on as per your character, not Tomas. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I got for you, gents. And with that, the camera pans in against your face to show the reflection of the wagon rolling over Burgess's head in the in the helmet, buried into the earth. You watch as his whole body stiffens as the hooves of the horses crash over top him. And what do you do? The camera pans around the scene to show you within it. As it does come in behind you, you can see to the side all this facing off against something that you can just barely see over to the other side of the cover. The um, the big bad guy, the boss guy is down, right? Boss guy is right here. He's doing great. He's doing great. Okay. He's feeling cute, might teleport later. Who's to say? So? Who, who's up in terms of initiative? You. Me? You. You're All in right. the head of it. Uh, Tomas was, was it. but he's dead now. Yeah. Um, uh, I've got the dagger with the paralysis on it, with the paralysis poison. Okay. Uh, I'm going to wing that thing. Motherfucker. Man, I no longer like this pipe. I fucking hate this pipe. I just spilled this pipe. I and gonna and I'm both. coming out of hiding, so I do have initiative, don't I? Ah, uh, you mean advantage? Or advantage, yeah. Uh, I think you attacked last round, so you wouldn't be hiding anymore. You have a no, I thought when I, when I oh when no, I you're. It, I was attacking and hiding, attacking and hiding, always going back in the corner. I'm pretty sure you're right about that. So yeah, no, that's fine. All right, what am I rolling here? Where's my attack with my... I'm switching over. Get all my stuff. All right. Where's my attack? Because, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I don't have my screens or anything else like I normally do, so things are all sorts of... That's all right. Sorts of jacked up here. I'm trying to get everything loaded up. I apologize. Take me one moment. All right. So I'm rolling. First one is a 17 plus 5. Hits. And then the second one is roll again. <coughs> now you're going to be running around to hit him? <coughs> 19 plus 5. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm hucking this dagger. I just came out of hiding to, to wing the dagger at the dude floating around, trying to paralyze him and go down. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so flying dude over here. So I got a 19 plus five, so it's 24. All right, so the thing is with the range being what it is. Uh, you know, oh, I don't, yo, I didn't, I'm sorry, we should have probably discussed that first. He's, uh, uh, you can hit him, it's just, yeah. it's at disadvantage. Oh, it's at disadvantage? Yeah, he's, okay, uh. Well, the, the first one was 17 plus five, so. Would the two cancel each other out, the advantage from hiding and disadvantage from range? Uh, yeah, we'll go with the first one in that case, uh, as you were saying. So 17 plus 5 for 22? Yes. Okay, well, that's still a hit. <laughs> okay. And then the rule was that you gave me, I'm trying to look this up, a DC 12 constitution save, or he's paralyzed for one turn. Oh, that was for the red on. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, I hate this fucking pipe now. Piece of shit. We're rolling around and all fucking crap. Actually, hold up. Ah! That's what it is. Not using it right. Okay, anyway. Um, the... 
You whip around the cover, looking up towards your mark. As you pull the blade from your belt and hurl it away, it zips through the air. In a straight, perfect line, as you fire it off, it flies straight and true, embedding itself against your opposition. Uh, he rolls a 16 plus bonus on that con check as it embeds itself in his flesh. He shrieks, grabbing a hold of it and throwing it away as fast as it embeds himself in him. How much damage does he take? It's going to be a D4 plus your dexterity bonus, or your strength uh, bonus. Sorry, I want to get off on you. Uh, so my D4 is plus D4 plus 3, so I'm going to roll that. Is a 2 plus 3, so that's 5, and I get the, uh, what do you call it, damage, right? The uh, Sneak attack. Or does that not count because I'm doing the, the, the poison? Uh, no, that works still. You still do the sneak attack damage. You came out of hiding. Okay. So I get 2d6 for that. So I've got 5 already, and then I tack on another 8. Okay. So 13, and then whatever. I guess he didn't get hit by the paralysis. No. But, sorry, how much damage total? 18? Uh, 8 plus 5, 13. 13. Okay. Very good. 13 damage explodes against him as he whips the dagger away and it lands with a thump down in the sand at, his, at the ground. Uh, the camera pans across your face as you, anything for a bonus section? My, so my, uh, my second action is to hide again. Okay. Uh, so you can, yeah, break eye contact from him, moving back into cover and hide away once more. As he looks towards you, the camera zips him on upon his face to show his eyes narrow and then pulls back to show the whole of the landscape before coming down to rest on all this. Oh shit. Okay, I saw two guys by me or one? Two. Okay, and then is Serena there or is Serena Resident is over there. there. Somebody's there. Somebody's Resident's there. here. Okay. Um well you need to start power chugging those uh, health potions. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm thinking. Like grab him off of grab him off of Thomas. <laughs> well I have on his action to chug, right? It's a full action to use a potion, guys. Yeah. I thought it was a bonus for someone. It's a bonus action to smash it on smash it on someone. Alright, so I'm gonna chug can I chug this potion and then take any other potions off of Tomas? Uh it'll be a full action to search him for whatever he's got on him. So you can chug a potion and that's your action and then you'll have your bonus, but you can't do both in one turn. Okay. Then I'll just chug the potion. Alright, uh I I can't remember what style I gave you. Did I give you two D four? Two D four plus two? I think so, yeah. Okay. So that's four plus three. Seven points. Okay. And with that, as the cooling fluid, syrupy and thick, hits the back of your throat, you immediately start to feel better. The camera pans against you. Your bonus action and movement still remain with the soldier directly in front of you. What do you do? I... <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much it. I'm going to get ready for when he gets me to cast shield, and that's about it. Alright, sounds good. As that happens, we go into focus. We go from Aldous to Resident. Yeah, Ricky, where's your camera, man? Sorry? Where's your feed, man? Where's my what? Where's your video feed? Oh, man. Um, there you are. Hi. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, still getting things launched because I'm okay. It's fair. Um, I have way too many computers and windows going at the same time. Hey, is the music really loud for you guys? 
it keeps going over top of you. Is it reducing in volume right now? Um, it's, it, you're easy to hear and it's reduced right now, yes. Okay, so that actually does affect you guys. Important to note. Cool. So as we were, Resvan. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull up my character sheet on the wrong tool. I'm trying to pull it up on this one, please. No worries. As you stand atop your roving crossbow, yes. we see behind you the silhouette of the floating monstrosity that is the head boss of the foot, and to your side, your companions, one of which has died, and the other stands at the edge of death's door, and two soldiers okay. between you and him. Okay. Um, because I'm dumb and I don't know what else to do. <laughs> um, I am going to... Sorry, I'm just going to check out my spells. Okay, you do your thing. Uh, one sec. I'll be right back. So, what did you say? I'll be right back. Uh, so, as an aside, uh, I guess the next thing, I'm going to try and throw that choke bomb and see if we can get this guy to not be able to cast stuff at us. Everyone cool with that theory? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I need... Okay. So, that guy on the staff, mm -hmm. is, that, is that the wizard dude? That's, That's the boss. boss. He's floating. Again. He's flying. Okay. So, so, did he, like, come down? Is that what happened? No. No. He's still flying, I. No, he's up in the air. My perspective's all messed up. Sorry. Nice. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, no, no. Um, so, from my perspective, oh, that's me. Okay, sorry. This is you. Oh, oh, that's him. him. Yeah. That's everything else. Okay. Yeah, I, to the I, left is me and the other guys. Okay. Good. So, the right is the boat boss guy. On the other side of the rock is up. And way down on the bottom, I believe, is soon. Okay. On the other side of the rock, yeah. Um, I am going to catapult. That's my highest damage spell. What's um, the thing you're writing on? Can't that shoot things? And that's things? my bonus action. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? Actually, I am going to cure wounds myself, and then I'm going to bonus action fire. Alright, so I'm going to cast Cure Wounds at level 2, and I get 15 hit points back, um, and I'm going to cast uh, Elder's Chain, and okay, so it's a DC 15 save, or do I roll to hit it? Sorry, what's the question? Uh, the flame, the um, the ballista. Okay, no, the ballista. I gotta roll the hit. Okay, so I'm gonna roll the hit, and I'm gonna do that because those dice will screw me. Stand up to the bag, dude. Yeah. So I got an eleven plus seven or plus seven is fifteen. Or sorry, eighteen. For the force ballista. Eighteen will hit. Okay. Uh, then we do two D eight. Six plus eight is fourteen points of damage. So I gain 15 and I do four, 14 points of damage. All right, so this is your ballista going off and you're casting a healing word on yourself? It, it went from being like below and being able to hear you to all of a sudden now it's overpowering. 
Oh, the music? Yeah, what changed? Well, I'm trying to get the volume going properly here, and uh, clearly that's not going to work. Got to turn that back down. All right, as we were, um, you're using your ballista and you're casting healing word on yourself? Uh, cure wounds. Cure wounds, wounds. okay. <clears throat> and what was your roll to hit with the ballista? 18. 18, which hits, and your damage was? Uh, 14. 14, very nice. Uh, in which case, that would be a... As the ballista shot fires away under your feet, okay. the string snapping forth, it, uh, the ballista bolt erupting from the trough and sailing away, smashing against the fellow as he tries to roll out of the way, taking another thir 13 points, you said. 14. 14. Uh, bringing him to 74. As he spins around in the air, um, the thing dragging a streamer of blood off of him as it takes a piece of his uh, clothing with. He uh, whips about, finally spattering blood from his mouth and looks down towards you, angry as you can imagine, with his facial expression contorted such, bruised and battered as he floats flying above you, trying to hold his composure but failing to do so with that last strike as he watches you uh, shower yourself in a moment of healing energies. Uh, and that's Resvin. Are you moving at all? Um, actually, I'm going to dismount and move away from my ballista. All right. Uh, you hop off. And as you do so, landing down below, the camera pans back to show where you are. Is that where you want to be? Um, I want to be about... 15 feet away from it, so that way if there's a fireball, it's not going to hit us both. <clears throat> so like here? Yes. Okay. Uh, you rush as far as your feet can carry you away from your ballista. The camera pans up and tilts down to show the whole of the scene for a brief moment before panning past you to come upon where Serena lies in the, in the dirt, having recovered. She watches and hears We're the here. cacophony of the wagon carrying past and the disgusting sound of the crunching man within his armor under the hooves and wheels of the wagon. I think that's like your favorite play right now. <laughs> and, and I appreciate it. Bird just getting like bowled under. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very happy with how that went. Uh, so what do I have around me in terms of threats? Say again. Uh, do I have anybody around me in terms of threats? Get the cuffs off. Get the cuffs off. You do not have any immediate threats. Both of the fellows on the ground are dead. Markham and Riggers seem to have your back. Hey. Uh. Uh, I will use second wind to heal for a bit. All right, I will heal thirteen points. Sounds good. That should be that's good. Mm -hmm. All right, what did I miss? I'm pretty sure. Everything. Uh, you guys are I all healed. It's done. Game's over. Every party white. Fourteen points because of my roll plus five levels. Uh, I will. Okay, I guess call up to Markham and Rigor. Uh, are you able to? Do you have any rope? You shout this out towards them as they're right racing past. Yes. Uh, all right, fair enough. Rig uh, Markham doesn't hear you for the hooves of the uh, horses and his focus on driving, but Rigger looks down towards you. What? She shouts out from the back of the wagon. 
Uh, am I able to catch up to them? Um, theoretically, you could get to your feet right now and jump into the wagon with a uh, athletics check, yes. Can I see the cuffs on Burgess's body? Can you see the what? The cuffs. The handcuffs. Oh, um, no. They were in front of him, and he's very much face down in the mud at the moment. Right. Would it be possible to check if they survived the impact? He's kind of he's kind of underneath the horses. Gotcha. I mean, if you, if you missed it, Burgess went under the wagon, and so the wagon is on top of Burgess. So Burgess is under oh. the horses, and the wagon is on top of where Burgess is under the horses. Gotcha. And then the cuffs are under Burgess. So the cuffs are, in fact, under the wagon, under Burgess. Oh. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will try to uh, circle around the rock to go help out Aldous. All right. Um, rising to your feet as heroically as one would expect of Serena. You take a quick surveillance of the scene and looking over towards the rock, go in search of your companions. Passing by dock, you see Aldous on the other side. Uh, and that's the extent of your movement. Gotcha. Unless you want to double move. Uh, I will. You'll double move? Oh, actually, would it be possible to circle around the other way to divide their attention? I wouldn't want to group up. If you want a double move, yes. Are you double I moving? Move All right. Those are. The camera watches you race over towards the other side. Uh, this would be about 15 feet here. As it pans over towards the one side, we see the soldier there. Uh, as he watches, boom, just so. Hi there! As you come racing in on the other front. Rounding the corner, you watch as he glances over his shoulder and suddenly startled by the hulking mass of armor and muscle that comes ripping in upon him. Um, that said, that's Serena. It's over to me. Markham and Rigger continue racing down the hill. And as they come around, Rigger takes aim and fires up towards the foot of... Uh, 13 plus bonus as the shot comes in he's going to spend a reaction shield as a result causing it to miss the arrow planks off of an ethereal moment that uh, erupts in front of him as he suddenly whips about the camera pans as such floating yonder and he shouts out move you idiots at which point, both of the guards disengage and rush to the one side. And as it zips down towards where the lot of you stand, he fires out a sudden eruption that explodes between you all. Uh, Doc, he, you have cover, but of course he doesn't know that. Uh, that so, said, everybody can make here. me a dex check. Serena, Resvin, and Aldous. One of my partners, those two bad guys, the other guy's floating off there in the corner. Hey, Sean's mom, how you doing? <laughs> you mean Sean's sister. Oh, is that Sean's sister? Sorry. No, that's my mom. That she was looking to see what's going on. <laughs> well, she's young enough, looking young enough to be a sister. There you go. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're so smooth, Dooley. I learned from the best. I got a two. Right on. I like that. I that's mean, that's so unfortunate. Points. Pardon? Uh, so you got a two on your check. Check. Uh, what do you got, Justin? Thirteen. Two plus, two plus four. Um, for my yeah, six total. Shit. Uh, I gotta look up this guy's fucking stat. What did I have for this guy's save? It's sixteen for this guy. I think so. I got a fourteen. Oh, good. You're all gonna die then. Uh, let's see here. No way, no. Do I have to roll? No, right? No, you have cover. Lucky you. <laughs> oh, yeah, fairy. Hi. Let's get that bitch up. Oh, there goes the window. Bring that up. 
and bring that up and Barry. How you doing, Barry? Gotta get my bitch in play. <coughs> Right, I was rolling. I think she's booted up. There it is. What do we got? What do we got? We got 27 damage. Yeah, baby. Uh, that's not bad. As he lines himself up top, the guard's racing away from the position. He snaps his fingers while pointing down below, and Tomas's poor body is immolated as an eruption of flame blasts out centered upon him. The cackling, menacing, loud, screaming laughter of the horned man overhead is too much to bear. As the cacophony explodes, the conflagration raging forth. I'm not actually going to light it on fire because I like these minis. I fall as well. I'm done. All this is exploded backwards. Flaming and frothing with bits of his skin melting. Doc, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Serena, you good? I will use Relentless Endurance to go to 1 HP and play dead. All right, fair enough. Blasted backwards, you drop to the ground, your chest heaving as adrenaline courses through you. You do your best to set, steady yourself, steady that flow, and hope that your companions still have a chance. And uh, Resident, how you doing? I'm down. As you drop to the floor, flames exploding over your vision, feeling the incredible heat and then suddenly nothing but cold. As darkness takes hold and you find yourself surrounded in the moment by nothing but your dreams. Or are they nightmares? Can't hear you. With that, the one soldier to the side uh, is going to... How big was that diameter? That was crazy. Uh, they're 20 foot radius. So it's a 40 foot diameter. Wow. Holy shakes. Yeah, in case you didn't know that about Fireball, it is humongous. New players. Yeah, 20 foot radius. 150 foot range. Yeah, it's mean. Alright, so, uh, this is the part where it gets really nasty, though. This guy's setting upon Doc. The camera pans to the one side. As, um... Who's setting upon Doc? Oh, what the hell? As Markham continues to rip the horses this way, uh, this guy is gonna spend his next movement running in beside Aldous. The camera pans over to show this guy spent his movement running in towards Serena. Uh, what happens to your crossbow, if anything, when you go unconscious? Um, yuck. From there, my turn concludes. And it is once again over to Doc. As the camera pans in against you, showing you taking cover, no longer quite hidden for the lack of... Uh, Lack of cover between you and the opposition. Oh, so that so there is a guy that's that's running in on me now. There is there is now, yeah, totally. Uh, do I have enough room to still fire off a, a an arrow or? Totally, totally. He's about 10, 15 feet away from you. Uh, yeah, let's fire off an arrow and try and get ahead. Now, now, what position? So, given what I was doing before, I'm kind of unsure as to where I am in terms of advantage and in terms of. Uh, my sneak attack. Oh, you know, given um, that he was interacting with somebody like where, like what am I, what am I throwing? You don't, you don't have a break in line of sight, so you're no longer hidden from him, eh? Well, I guess not. I mean, I'm, I'm asking you. I don't. I no, don't that's know. that's actually a rule. Like you have to have a break in line of sight. You can't. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you I'm, know what? I'm, that's I'm rolling straight. Um. 
Actually, you know what? I'll roll for him. Uh, did you roll to hide? You want me to roll to hide? Yeah, uh, just to get your score from the last round, because you hid after you shot Buddy, but you yeah. never actually rolled for it, so the question is, how, how well did you hide? And then my perception right. has to beat that. Just roll right? a d20, or is there a certain one yeah. I'm supposed to roll? Like no, d20. Or... Yeah, d20 plus your proficiency bonus. Uh, sorry, it's uh, it's a d20 for um, stealth. It's your stealth skill. Okay, my stealth. There we go. Uh, so it's uh, <clears throat> my cannon stays around unless reduced to zero. So if it okay, was cool. in the damage range, then then oh, it would have taken damage for sure. It would have taken. Uh, you can roll a save for it, I guess. It can use uh, it can use your save. I've got eleven plus five, sixteen. Right. Uh, this guy's passive perception isn't gonna beat it. Um, as he rushes in towards you, slide to the one side, easily taking cover as you break. Uh, break uh, as you immerse yourself in the shadows of the stone, he doesn't manage to see you as you uh, as he rushes in upon Aldous's body. It gets a natural twenty on its save. Shut the front door. Yeah, I know. Nice. It's still, uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. It still doesn't do anything because I'm not there to use it as a bonus action. No, I get that. It's still going to take half damage as long as I say, uh, so 13. Yeah, so it has uh, five points of damage, 5.5. Okay. Or, yeah. Yeah? The walking ballista. Uh, boo -boo 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 -boo. That, that was me, and then Doc... Uh, you're up, yeah. So right, being so still hidden, you want to what? Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if the guy's heading towards us, I'm going to light him up because he's going to try and, and snuff out Aldous, so... He is thoroughly about to snuff out the magic user. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to light him up. Now, so my, what, am I, what am I throwing? Like, what am I... Am I just doing a regular hit, or...? Well, that's up to you. Do you want to stabby-stabby? Do you want to use your crossbow? Uh, I was gonna use. I mean, I've got my short bow. Yeah, by all means. I keep forgetting that you don't, you don't use a crossbow. Sorry. Yeah, I don't have a. I don't have a crossbow. Um, so I just roll regular. So four, ro rolling regular, fourteen plus five, nineteen. Fantastic hit. As you uh, line up the shot from the darkness and unleash, uh, you do have sneak attack on this. So I've got. I rolled a five plus three. That's eight for the basic, and then I have to do the sneak attack. So eight plus. Roll the 2d6. 8 plus 6, so 14. 14 points of damage? Yeah. Uh, S1 was at 41, and with 14, you down him. And then my bonus, I can hide. Uh, again, you or? may. As the arrow fires into him, um, I can actually fix that. Do one of these. The guy drops back unceremoniously as it connects in his head, uh, causing him to gurgle a little bit on the ground as he seizures into death. Oh. From there, you Eight. slip away a moment later, back into cover, as the camera pans up to show the surprised and angered look on the figure's face. Then panning back, showing the singular individual still situated next to Serena, heaving on the ground. Aldous, you have been spared. Make a death save. So outside this, I don't remember. Can I like force feed him a health potion, or is that not a possibility? Yeah, you can take a full action to force feed somebody a health potion, or you can smash it over their head for a bonus. They get half the health for it. And okay. sorry, did you make your death save? Eleven, yeah. Terrific. Uh, all right, never mind. Actually, well, I'm right, so gonna so so who is just to correct who is down? All this is closest to me. All this is down. Serena's down, and Resvan's down. You're Serena's the only down one. Too. No, Serena Everybody. has one hit point. Oh, that's yeah, right. I'm playing dead. That's right. Totally forgot about that. That's right. Everyone's down though, as far as Doc is concerned. Oh shit! All right. Actually, you wouldn't even know come to think of it from your position necessarily. You might know. You know that all this is down. I know all this see, is down. And you can see Resvan from your position. I'll say. Yeah. But you don't know about Serena. You're hoping yeah. to God that Serena's okay. And you can still <laughs> hear. And you can still hear Markham and Rigger ripping around. Yep. All right. 
So now, if I'm correct, looking at the way that things are laid out, if I make just, just and this is outside of it, just looking at this, if I if I go to Thomas and force feed a a potion, Thomas is done. I will I will, I will have not Thomas I, I Aldis. Yeah. yeah, I will have Thomas between me and Rez that I can hit up Thomas for whatever he's got left in his belt and That's then true. force feed that to Rez. That's true. Rez has one as well. Okay. All right. Not the doc knows that. No, I don't. I don't oh. know what you have. I know that Thomas had them because I remember him picking them up. But that's it. But but no no Thomas Tim, Tom, Thomas gave everybody one. Like he he passed them out. Oh okay, fair enough. Oh all right yeah. Because yeah. I have one too, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He passed them out. Yeah, but he had two. Yes. Because he had ex he had an extra one. Yeah. So he just let us okay. all know that. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. I just want to make sure I'm not screwing screwing things up, but that at least gives me like a plan of motion. So? Who's up? Uh, if that's you, it is over to Aldous on the ground who did his death save, and then uh, over to Resvin. Thirteen. Thirteen is bueno. It's what? Bueno, you're alive still. Well, alive. Uh, Serena. So how does the death save, death save thing work? Three successes before three three fails. If a dude hits you while you're down, it counts for two failures. If you get to three failures, you're dead. If you get to three successes, you're stabilized. You're not conscious. Someone can come along and slap you awake. Okay. Otherwise, after a long rest of laying there for six to eight hours, depending on race, or no, four to six hours, depending on race, you'll snap awake, fully, mm -hmm. fully rested. That looks like a penis you're sucking on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to you. It is floppy. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so, uh, Serena, as the camera zips around, it shows you as the fellow comes racing in towards. You steady yourself. Your chest still ready to heave, but you manage to hold it steady as your heart races within it. How is the guy looking who's running up to me? Fresh as a daisy. Ready uh, to rock and, and roll. Not a dent in his armor. Well, not a fresh dent, anyway. And the cart? Uh, you can't really see it if you're looking towards the one guy and trying to fake dead. Are you Are you worried about faking dead? Uh, can you can I... still, you can hear it ripping past you above your head. All right. You can uh, hear it will... over there. In that case, uh, the the guy with the armor, is he panicked on account of the... Uh, no, he's the... coming in towards your fucking head. He's coming... Ah! <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking standing up then. As he comes racing in towards you, you suddenly rise to your feet, scrambling up, and your mountainous self squaring off against him. As your weapon strikes into the ground, as you prepare to receive his impending attack, you what? You have half movement left and a full action and your bonus action. All right, could I get to the cart? The camera pans backwards to show the cart some distance away. As it's ripping along, you look down the hill, knowing that in D&D you get double movement for going downhill. You figure you can make it with an athletics roll just like you could last time. I'm gonna go for it. As you break from him, racing away, he takes an AO upon you. With an 11 plus five against your AC, does he hit? Nope. As he swings out and scrapes against the backside of your armor, causing no harm, you roll me athletics as you race towards the cart. That is a... 22. You jump easily into the back of it, rolling to a halt as rigor. Aye! Watch me leggings! Steps over you, knocking an arrow and getting ready to fire again. The camera pans from you around to the other side. You still have a bonus action. Are you doing anything? Uh, potion is a full action, right? Yes. Nope, that's all I got. As you jump into the back of the wagon, the camera pans around to the other side as the knight looks over towards where his companion's fallen and sees fit 
Uh, so he yells out, Are we staying or going, sir? No, he doesn't do that. Fuck that. He knows what to do. Um, the commander, though. I don't know if that's. I don't have a slot anymore, so what am I going to do? Um, he probably attacked the uh, ballista. It's not a bad idea, but. I need. Sorry, just stats. Uh, fuck. Oh, no, don't do that. Fuck. No. No, too many. Too many. All these tabs. Holy shit, my browser's crashing now. All the fucking things. Come on. All right, here we go. Finally. Uh, bear with me, guys. What is it called there? Um, shit, there it is. So this guy. You want to turn that? Yep, all legal. Good, good. And this guy is going to look over towards where the horses are coming down. As you dive into the back of the cart, the camera pulls back to show the whole of the scene as this guy suddenly starts running in towards Resvan. The camera f finds itself forward and this fellow flying in front of the cart snaps his fingers in front of the horses. And as the camera pulls back and a dazzling eruption of fireworks explodes in front of them, the horses throw me a constitution save. Who what? Sorry, I'm having... We have to throw a constitution save for the horses? Well, I have to. Oh, okay. Because it saying? helps... I, I, I threw crap, I threw a five. <laughs> Thank God it doesn't count. Who says it doesn't? Uh, okay, no. <laughs> so... They've only got a plus one, so you guys better be open for the best here. I mean, they're um, horses. For oh, shitty. Oh, oh, that one did well. Um, which is even worse, because now one's dragging the other. Uh, <laughs> so, as the fireworks explode in front of the horses, um, shooting off all sorts of terribleness in all directions, of course, you can only imagine how spooked the horse becomes, the first horse becomes, but never mind the other seems to have gone completely blind. Uh, Sounds like my wedding. As, uh, as Markham shrieks out, uh, yeah, as Markham shrieks out in frustration, he holds steady, making a pilot check of shitty, uh, which is eight plus bonus, coming to a grand total of 12 here. Holding the reins as hard as he can, the cart starts to veer as the one horse spook tries to rush out of the direction of the fireworks, dragging the other through it. As that one suddenly is going blind, it tries to stop, causing the whole of the cart to lurch as he holds uh, against the reins best he can. The whole of it tilts, and Serena, you can throw me a deck save as Rigor and Markham do the same. 14. Rigor does terribly. Markham does atrociously. Uh, you are going to take half of the... Shitty. Oh, man. 
Taking half of a d6 is two damage, causing you to be knocked unconscious. Uh, Markham takes six points, and Rigor takes five. As Serena is dumped Can from the wagon... Can you all stop dying, please? <laughs> as Serena is dumped from the wagon and Rigor rolls over her, landing with an Ufta, Markham lands skidding against her on the other side. As, uh, as this occurs... The camera pans against Rigor's face as she scrambles to her feet out of frame, knocking an arrow spinning around and firing up towards the fellow. The arrow sails away from her as... As the horned figure shouts out... In furious anger and pain. Uh... Sorry, it's D8 on her part uh, for all of one point of damage plus bonus. So it's going to be uh, not quite enough, but it brings him to 79. So as the arrow punctures through his armor, causing yet another geyser of blood to shower off him, he shrieks out, gasping for air as he breaks it off. Um, Markham gets to his feet and looks around. He uh, pats himself down for a moment and suddenly produces a small flask. He pops the cork off it and proceeds to douse Serena's throat in its contents. As he empties it into you, he, so he then knocks it out of your mouth as you take 2d4 plus 2. Uh, lucky you. So six plus two for eight points of healing that find their way into your system. As Markham looks up towards the horned figure and says, "Where I fucked? Where I fucked?" And Rigger says, "Shut your mouth!" And pulls another oh, yeah. arrow from the string. It's so that we survive. Oh, that's it. The camera pans alongside to show as the blade from the knight starts to raise over Resvan's head, and he brings it down, stabbing in through his armor, puncturing between Resvan's ribs. He pulls it out after he's provided you with the two fails. But he only has one attack a turn. Oh no, these guys had two. Perfect. Wait, he doesn't have to. Did he have to roll? Oh, he on the ground? No, you don't have to roll. If he did his chant thing. Hey? I thought they only had two attacks if he did his, like, war chant thing. Oh, that's right. That's what it was. Thank you. That's where the second attack was. Yeah, they had, like, inspiration or something. Or something too. Yeah, it gave him, like, a bonus attack. Yeah, he could, uh, he could incur one from everybody. I'm trying to remember if they had two attacks, because the soldiers had. No, the ninjas had two attacks. Shit. I don't want to miss an opportunity to kill somebody. I mean, I killed Tomas this way. Pretty sure they get two attacks, guys. Because they are knights. Let me double check the stats. Rez, what did you do to piss duels off? <laughs> Boss fight, buddy. <laughs> also, he was the closest one, so really. <laughs> it's two attacks. So as I was saying... As he uh, punctures down into Resvan's body, he then levers forward for the second attack, severing through and ending Resvan. Oh, that's it? He, that, that's his... All that's his it. Saves. You're that's done. dead. I think it's like a critical when they attack you when you're down automatically, so that's automatically two fails. If you hit somebody when they're down, it's, yeah, two fails. But with that said... The camera suddenly pulls backwards as the knight pulls the blade from you to show Doc. As Doc, your face droops with the sudden realization of something. As oh. you can just seem to feel it all around you. This dire sense of thick air. As the camera sweeps in over top and shows you 
against the stone, what do you do? Uh, so here's my question. Given the distance, if I throw my choke bomb, am I throwing at disadvantage? Or since he's facing the other way, does it cancel out? I'm just throwing regular... What am I... What am I facing here? Sorry, you want to throw your choke bomb towards where? Towards the, the floating dude to stop him from lighting all of us up. If you hit him, it'll explode at him. If you miss him, it'll fly past him. Yes, but what I'm saying is like when I'm, when I'm throwing, like, a, is it so far away that I'm throwing a disadvantage? Or oh, oh sorry, yes. It is, it is a disadvantage for the distance. It is a disadvantage. For the all distance, right. yes. All right, and, and, okay. So it's plus, all right. All right, I mean, I guess, what, what do I, I, I mean, I don't know. I know my other rolls were plus five, but that was for like, I don't know what it is when you're throwing something. Are you hidden? Yeah, I'm coming out from hiding. For you, it's the same thing. Because you're using your deck, your dagger as a dexterous weapon. All no, it's not a dagger. I'm throwing. I'm throwing this choke bomb. So I don't know. Oh. Like I don't know what it is. Like before, like my dagger, my dagger and my short bow are both at plus five. I don't know what happens. Because you're using your dexterity modifier. Yeah. You're using dexterity and proficiency, which I think we're probably plus two and a plus three. Your dexterity is plus three. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what you're going to do with the same thing. Plus five. Okay. All right, so I roll twice. Actually, I, I don't know if you're going to get the two for your proficiency or not. I don't know if Louis wants to get that two or not. That's I don't know. What, what does it come out? <laughs> doing? So plus three or plus All right. five? I, I've got, so the two rolls I've got, I've got an 11 and a 15 on a roll of 20. So the 11 is the lowest. And then what do I add on, Billy? Do I add on the three or the five? For, for throwing this? Yeah. For throwing the choke bomb at it's, the, the It's floaty. your strength bonus on a throw. It's strength. Oh, strength. Yeah. Throwing yeah, strength. is strength. Strength plus proficiency. So strength is zero. So proficiency it is. Two. Two. So, yeah, 13. Add. Um, in a desperate attempt, you whirl about the stone coming out from hiding. As you find your opposition floating away, you hurl the long bomb as it sails away and fails to strike your target as it harmlessly flies past out of frame. The camera pans against the desperate moment. As you stand there looking past him and he staring at you, it shows you on the hill and then suddenly zips in on your face. Oh, I get to, I get to hide again. I'm, I'm not <laughs> but, standing up there. <laughs> but being where you're positioned, as you stare past him, you see something in the distance. Oh, you shit. see banners you see banners in the distance and they're coming in towards racing towards you guys you see tens of them at least and you can easily see the crest recognized even from this distance and you realize that he hasn't seen them yet and as the camera pulls back and shows off in the distance where he stands you can see several banners sprouting from the horizon each with the crest of the purple dragons, the military of Cormier, out on patrol. They must have seen the explosion from however far away and are steadily rushing in towards to see what is going on. Oh shit. So what do you want to do? Uh, I, I Finish up with wanna... movement and hide? Yeah, I mean, I do want to hide again. I'm not looking to leave Seeing myself out. Seeing what you see, you still put your back against the wall and take cover against your opposition floating in the distance. Your chest heaving with the adrenaline rushing through you as you realize that you just saw the destructed cart and the horses pulling desperately against the cart, trying to survive, although neither of them are in any immediate and danger. And one of blind, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unable to see your companions on the other side of the uh, of the wagon pitched uh, the pitched wagon, the uh, the moment seems rather dire. 
But despite this, the camera pans down against all your companions. All this, you can make me another death save. All this. My apologies, Resvan and uh, Serena. You are alive. I will use a four. Ooh, that's unfortunate. The bells of doom toll. All right, all right. All this is running one and one. Res is out. Serena's got eight hit points. And, and as the camera pans around to show Serena amidst the few companions that are healthy in this situation. Uh, where am I here? Right about here. Right. I got a Dutch angle there. There you go. <laughs> Shit, the purple dragons are just gonna hit this guy, aren't they? they yeah, they probably help us. I mean, they're probably just gonna take all of us. <laughs> <laughs> You're all under arrest! Yeah, at this, like... No, but we're, I mean, we're, we are still technically purple dragons, aren't we? Technically? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. No, really you are you are literally badge carrying bounty hunters. Yeah. Yeah. But that said, uh, Serena, lying on the ground, you don't know of the purple dragons yet. Although Markham, you hear him whisper something under his breath. What's your passive perception? Uh, passive perception is thirteen. It's good enough. Over twelve, being you, uh, you can hear him say, "It's a fucking army." Look. And rigor. A moment later. Doesn't say anything, but her eyes shine as she continues to knock her next arrow. Uh, it's a good shine? Uh, yeah, she has a smile on her face, or a smirk. Okay, uh, how far am I from Aldous? You're not sure. You're a ways away for sure, though. Gotcha. You just came too, right? You have no idea exactly. Makes sense. Uh... I will uh, run as far away from the cart as I can, breaking from cover and doing a dodge action. Okay. The camera pans upwards and overhead as you rise to your feet. Ooh, hey, watch out, Markham. Uh, and where are you headed? Which way? Uh, you get your bearings. I will head to the trail of destroyed wagons and try to find cover. Okay. As the camera pans overhead, it shows you rushing Grand Theft Auto style as hard as your feet can carry you. Uh, you double move, plus some, diving into the back of the wagon, finding cover there. Or do you want to go behind the wagon? I don't really care. I will go behind, I guess. All right. Just to find cover, and I call to the others before I go. There Does might be no way, but that mage is here now. Find cover. As the camera pans around and shows him floating aloft, uh, Rigger fires off another shot with 11 plus bonus. This one missing altogether as it sails past him. Uh, the fellow floats this way. Letting himself carry on the wind. Find the last ones! This fellow rushes over past Aldous, jumping over him. Uh, unable to see you at first, Doc. He then double moves out over here. Sighting upon you, he finishes his movement there. Uh, as the camera pans along to show where he is. As the camera pulls back. Um... Let's see, this guy will spend his action to inspire his dude, uh, at which point he will rush in and take a quick thrust in upon you as the camera pans in overhead to show the guy coming down upon uh, with a 12 plus bonus for 17 against Doc's AC. And I apologize, I know you said you were hidden, um, but given that I don't see any way to actually cover you in this case, I can't, uh, there's like nothing to give you cover against any, uh, against line of sight. Oh, there was a guy on my side? I didn't know he was on my side of the... He double machine. moved and then the commander gave out the order as he, uh, as he All came. Alright, so what do you need to know for me? Actually, you know what? Uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. 
he is gonna see you or think he sees you. Meanwhile, the big guy, um, he is going to, he is going to, Eh, oh my god, tabs. You know what? No, that's what he's going to do. Um, but you know what? Since you said you were going to hide, uh, why don't you go ahead and roll me the hide score that you would have been hiding with as this guy's looking for you? I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time hearing you, Julia. What can I do for you? You know what? Never mind. This guy's just going to firebolt mark him. Uh, with a, or uh, rigor, I should say. And with a three plus bonus, he fails to do that. Uh, the firebolt sails away as it strikes down next to Rigor as she rolls out of the way. The camera pans against the battlefield to show his attention suddenly pulled to the one side as he sees into the distance the riders coming in towards. And as the camera pans around, you watch as he lowers himself down to the ground. Markham steps out and looks towards him. What are you doing? And he doesn't respond. He just stands there, his cloak, or he just walks with his head towards uh, Markham with his cloak billowing around. And he walks out towards uh, the road there as Rigger shouts out. Um, as Rigger shouts out, what do we do? Camera's gonna pan from there back to Doc. Uh, so I've got that guy that's now in view, and I can't hide at all. So uh, is he close enough for me to switch to short sword or? Yes. Yeah, I guess that's my uh, my only choice. Okay. Um, and in doing so. Um, I don't know what the rules are on, uh, like I don't know I don't know how it all, all works. Now. Well, what do you want to know? Well, I mean I, I mean I want to strike at him, but obviously I don't have an advantage. Um, you know we I had loaded up the sword with the paralysis like I did for the dagger. I mean that's why I'm down to like four or three of the poison. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then how many swings was it good for? Did I say? Good for two. So okay. the dagger I tossed and I hit in one shot, and then he threw it on the ground. So yep. the dagger was down, was laying on the ground below where he got hit. But you and want to use your sword. short sword. I've got the short sword. That's a lot. That's good for two swings. Okay. Um, and then I've got the other dagger, that's the regular poison to to do if I do two uh two attacks. So are you doing that? Uh yeah, but I really don't have a choice. I don't have advantage anymore, so I can't get my um. Uh, my surprise, my sneak attack. So yeah, we're gonna go at it. All right. So first one with the short sword mm -hmm. is eight plus five, thirteen. Is a miss. Is a miss. All right. Let's go for the dagger. Dagger is an eighteen plus five, a twenty-three. A uh, twenty-three will do the job. That's your dagger. Yep, that's a dagger. That's a fantastic dagger strike. All right, so it's 1d4 plus 3, which is a 4 plus 3. That's 7. And then the, the poison with that is 1d6. Let's hear about so that. 7 plus, it's rolling. Ah, 6. There nice. we go. Uh, so it's 13. 13, right on. Uh, as you rush in towards him, you bring your short sword to slash in upon hoping for a next strike, but he brings his sword to bear against. As this clangs against, oh sorry, as this, uh, I should say, I wish we were gonna have this, clangs against, you then manage to stab in and underneath his armor, puncturing as you don't quite get the, get the crease. You push 
the blade right through his steel, directly into his body. He hurts with pain as this hits him uh, for 13 points and whimpers slightly as you pull the blade out. Oh shit, he's not done. No, they've got uh, about 50 hit points apiece. They're knights. You can look them up on the beyonds. Oh, fuck. Yeah, they're badass. Hey. Yeah, I just, I was hoping to get around to Aldous to at least give him a potion, but that's not going to happen. Oh, Aldous is not really in any major danger yet. He's still got a turn or two. Uh, <laughs> but that said, <laughs> just keep it real. Just keep it real. Yeah, except for the fact that I'm a rogue and I can't really cause 50 points of damage in the turn and then disengage. As the camera pans back, showing some of the cart drivers sitting up on the hills, scared out of their minds at what's been happening, it finally pans down past uh, Malakan's body to show Serena and it makes the rubble of the destroyed cart. And as it lifts up to show in the distance, the, uh, the crew's cart still tilted and the horses at this point plodding somewhat calmly you watch as this fellow walks down the slope calm as could be so what do you do so there are salvageable cards oh there are, yeah there are actually a bunch of cards behind it And they have horses, I should say. Each of these has a horse. Hey, uh... They're not going to move very quickly, obviously. Great. I will... go up to a horse and get on. Alright. Do I have enough speed to get over to Doc? Okay, that is 20. Oh, really? Okay, in that case, uh, you reach over with your massive stature and slap the thing in the ass. It suddenly pays very, very close attention to you behind it. And as a result, starts to pull forth. Uh, this will be your huckleberry here. As you... Uh... Oh, my God. As it were, as you start to steer up the hill, the horse, despite uh, all the natural speed that they typically have, is clearly struggling with pulling the whole of the cart and all the load of gold behind it up the slope. As you heroically trek up the hill towards your your <laughs> as you uh, as you dramatically begin to trundle forth with the wagon. You think to yourself about your life choices and how far through you might have thought this. Oh, shit. I didn't realize it was still attached to the cart. Yeah, they're all still attached to the carts. Oh, fuck. Uh, in... Do you want to cut it free from? Is that the whole concept here? Did I miss that part? Yeah, I, gotcha. I want to cut it free, ride That's it up. Fine. To you rush it upon the horse with your bonus action. We'll let you offhand cut it. Right on. That sound pretty good. Yeah, sure. Um, actually, we're gonna take a full action to cut it free, but uh, okay. I'll let you keep that twenty ride. And with that said, uh, you break the horse free, and uh, climb aboard. And so at that point, you can race up the hill. And there you go. Okay. Okay. Seriously, come on, horse. Come on, horse. There you go. All right, I am going to try to ride up, kick the knight in the face, and prompt Doc to get on. Uh, it's one or the other. The knight's not close enough. Gotcha. Uh, but I will let you. I mean, you don't even have you don't have a full action anymore. 
but I will let you use your bonus action uh, to grab a hold of Doc. I'll do that. Throw me strength. That is a 25. 25? Terrific stuff. Easily do you reach down, grabbing a hold of your companion. You pull against his stature and find him come aloft easily enough. And I'm sorry, Doc, do you allow this? I mean, no one throws a dwarf, but... <laughs> I, I guess I don't really have a choice. I mean, the orc is grabbing me and tossing me onto the back of this. Well, if you don't oh, give I'm, him... I'm trying to, like, have, help us get away. If you don't give him your arm, he can't grab you. I, I guess he could kind of grab you, but he'd have to make a ranged attack at that point. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the arm. I, I, I hate retreating, but yeah. All right. As you grab a hold of Serena's arm, you are thrown aloft, and the horse continues rushing past, given they have quite a bit of movement. Um, I think they have 40 feet a turn, so let me just figure this uh, from there, and then another... Yeah, so actually, bang on. Bam! All right. As we were, the horse races away as the fellow looks towards what's happening. The camera panning as such. I'm, I'm just sure. going to point out here, Serena, did we just leave Rigor and uh, Markham behind? There's more horses. <laughs> Is this coming from the person that said, don't slash the throat of the random people on the riverbank that were trying to kill us? <laughs> yeah, like, again, she, she doesn't want to kill anybody. <laughs> at, at this point, we all just sort of have to make a break for it. Okay, so you're rushing off with uh, with Doc on your back as the camera pulls back, showing the scene at large. Destruction everywhere, dead bodies littering the battlefield. And the one knight, watching as you race away, takes a moment to fumble around for his crossbow and pulling it out, fires. <sighs> with a 12 plus bonus, he strikes the horse. Uh, being the rider, you can opt to take the hit. That's a fact. That's a rule. So Serena can choose to take... Oh, no. No, 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 no. Never mind. I I'm pretty sure the rule says you can opt for the mount to take the hit. Uh, so, never mind. He's, he's aiming for your mount. Um, uh, four plus two in these case. Uh, this guy's going to do six damage in your horse. Cool. Uh, with that, he fires away as he backs up, actually, pulling out from the, from, pulling away from your position as the camera shows him moving down the hill towards his boss. And as the camera pans against Markham and Rigger, who get up and start backing away, uh, Rigger knocking an arrow, gets ready to take another shot at the limping fellow in the foreground who simply walks to the foreground and stares ahead and opens his arms, welcoming the incoming army. As the camera pans against the scene to show the drivers yonder, they start to walk in towards where they see the soldiers coming upon and panning upwards and overhead out of focus. We see some figures race away out of the scene. There's a brief montage of the horse's hooves and various bits of scenery passing by as you race along the East Road. Unsure of what happened to Markham and Rigger. Unsure of exactly where you're going just yet, but knowing that you have to get the fuck out of Dodge. Doc, as you clutch a hold, somewhat hurt, but still fiendishly um, still fiendishly motivated towards a goal, but unsure of what direction to take. You think back on the days when Tomas would direct, when there was a plan, when you had an idea of what was going on, how to do things. Where are we going now, you ask yourself? <coughs> how do things get so bad? Have you been here before? Why is your life in this cycle like this? 
Why do you lose is, those is, closest is this, is this to you? Where, is this where I fall in love with Serena and we ride off into the sunset? I thought that's where we're going. I, I've with. seen that. I've seen that 4chan meme. I've seen that. <laughs> just, just little quarter or half dwarf babies. Babies <laughs> <laughs> ugly freaking kids. Ew. Just ew. But anyhow. <laughs> this suddenly switches. And next thing we know... You see nothing, but they, but you suddenly see the wavy caustics of light flashing before you. You see, you can't breathe. You can't breathe. You, what's going on? No, you don't have to breathe. No, you are breathing. What's, you are floating. It's cold, but not so cold. As the camera pulls back, we see Resvin in a jar, a large jar, large crystal structure of sorts floating. And a moment later, you feel something tighten around your abdomen as you're pulled up out of the crystal structure, dripping wet, the dank, the dark all around you. Your eyes come into focus. You realize you're alive. You feel against your chest, your arms limp at your sides. You find they're accessorized with something slightly heavy, metallic. You recognize the sigils upon them. They glow blue. As you dangle there, you look across the small chamber and you see a figure in shadow ahead of you. The figure doesn't say anything at first, but after a moment, gives a, ha, huh, he's awake. Good job. Here is your manis. And a door opens slightly. A hand reaching through and you see a white robe hanging off of the arm as a sack of coins is exchanged. The door shuts a moment later, and you hear it actually clack shut this time. As he turns towards you and comes into the light, you don't recognize the face. There's uh, another horned figure, slightly less, um, slightly less protrusion uh, no, slightly smaller protrusions than the previous figure that you remember. And as his blue face curls up into a bit of a smirk, he looks you over and gives an approving nod. And then walks away to leave you dangling over the crystal basin. As he opens the door and heads out it, he says, you can cut him down. Put him in a cell the other one. The camera pans up against all this. Hey? So I don't, I don't recognize any of these figures and everything's too hazy for me to focus? You feel like your soul just got ripped back across the, across the uh, grand of space and time, the grand distance of space and time to be put back in your body. You feel so strange right now from the inside out. You can still feel the cold of the steel that cuts you apart. And as you try to focus, it's almost as though your brain is having trouble with the concept of being alive again. You're slowly becoming more focused as you feel yourself grasped and pulled to the one side of the basin onto a small causeway that comes into view. The dripping of moisture from a nearby pipe catches your attention and you find yourself extremely focused on it as your brain slowly recovers. The haze lifting ever so painfully slowly, you start to focus on the figures grasping you and unraveling the rope. One of them throws a sack over you 
and pulls it down across your head as it turns into a bit of a, um, he's literally putting a sack over your head with a hole in the top and your head pops up through the sack's hole to show you dressed in a potato sack. They then wrap that very same rope around you like a belt. And they I would fit to... in a potato sack, I'm pretty small. Point being, they start leading you down along by the leash around your waist. And you find yourself walking steadily, almost automatically, in tow. It's not that you feel mind-controlled, not that you would know, you think to yourself. But the fact that you're thinking about it should show you're not <coughs> rationalized. The camera pans against you to show them walk you out the open door. And the camera steadily dollies backwards back over the basin to show the water dripping into it from the pipe. It jump cuts to show Aldous suddenly snap awake at the sound of a loud squeak of metal. We watch as... We watch as Aldous comes to, focusing ahead, and in the reflection of your eyes, you can see the form of Resvin being shoved into the cell. The gates last closed a moment later. Now you're just being mean, Julie. Those cells are terrible. <laughs> You hear the footsteps of the guard echo away as the fellow retreats off. Aldous, you came to in this place. You look around the cell for the first time. You feel rested. You've clearly been here a while. To your left, you see a bowl of some old meats. Flies buzzing around it. Looks about as fresh as it gets around here. The floor is covered in hay. The bars are iron and thick. And there doesn't seem to be any windows. Oh no, there's one. There's no light right now for nighttime. But if you angle, you arch just slightly and there's the moon. You feel something cold at your wrists and look down to see a pair of manacles. Not chained, mind you. They're more like bracelets, I should say. They're, um... About a quarter inch thick gold uh, wrappings around your wrists. Uh, they've got a hinge and a lock, and uh, there's a blue glow of glyphs writhing, similar to the ones that you slapped on Burgess. Camera the pan. Got pushed in also? Sorry, yeah, uh, the camera pans against you to show you looking over Resvin. And uh, pans down against Resvan's body to show the same wristlets on him. Uh, I would like to go over to the bowl of meat. Yeah. Uh, walk it over to Resvan. Um, tell him to eat up. And then I want to go grab some hay and start eating some hay. <laughs> All right. Stick with it. Um, you grab a hold of the hay and look it over. It smells terrible. It looks worse. Um, against your better judgment, you start to eat it. Cleaning off the straws, I'm assuming, as best you can. It's disgusting, but it fills your stomach slowly. Make me a constitution check as you begin to retch. And resin just the same as you grab a hold of the meat. It smells and tastes like something that they would feed maybe the dogs if they were being cruel. You manage to keep it down, all this as you munch away on the hay. It's sharp against your mouth and your throat and rests uneasily in your stomach. You almost immediately feel the need to shit. That said though, Resvan manages to scoop some of the food into his mouth autonomously. And would you roll for a constitution check? 18. Keeping it down as you chew through it, too hungry to care about the smell, the texture, 
consistency. Not anything matters. Just survival. As you consume nearly a quarter, then half, then three quarters of the bowl, giving off a burp that tastes like the worst thing you've ever released from your other end. The camera pans against your faces, showing you in the south this mangy, dark, dank, terrible self. Well, we gotta jump back and forth, so I'm gonna be fair here, you know. No, I was asking Resden if he had any idea. Oh, okay. Really no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Fair enough. Bear with me one second, gentlemen. Mm hmm. I'm very confused as to what is going on right now. So, I just did a bit of time dilation there to, uh, of course, show Resident and all this and their fate. Just so, uh, number one, Rick knows that he's not like having to write up a new character, and there's a reason. Okay, I, it, you know it's not personal and, and no worries. I was like, oh, this is actually an opportunity to be better at work. Good. Make something else, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I could leave you dead. I don't have a problem with that either. These guys would have an interest in raising you. If, if, if it's part of your story, I'm totally, I'm totally yeah. fine with anything, dude. Right? Like, it's it's about the story. It's so whatever. Yeah. That's awesome. <coughs> that said, as uh, the camera pans up to show the city of Arabelle, it pans down into the city to show birds flying past. And then some moments later, we see through the alleyways, the streets, and come upon a little fortified residence. I'm assuming you guys are going back to Rotherick's, but you tell me. I mean, that's our only cover right now. I mean, what do you think of Tarina? Yeah, I know that. Probably seems like the best idea. I am able to take a short rest. I can be back in the fight. Otherwise, we're just stuck running. I, mean, I can go with Jesus take the wheel, and you're, you're up front, and I'm kind of the midget on the back of your horse. So I really don't have much choice. Uh, I do want to ask you what you make of all that happened. Uh. I think that we underestimated what we were running into. Um, I don't know, and the question that I have for this is, did Roderick know that we were walking into that time bomb over there? I... I and, what are, and what are we going to do when, when uh, the other two show up? And last I saw them, For heavy fighting. For all I they were able to become their horse as I was. Markham being gifted in that manner beyond any of us, surely. I've just never been a fan of leaving people behind, but we had to do what we had to do. Uh, I think making our way back to, uh, to Roderick's to see what's going on. I mean, we, we, we did some damage, but only so much we can get done there. If it weren't for their leader, we would have prevailed. Of that, I have no doubt. Yeah. But I, I, I guess for now, we're just going to go as far as we can to uh, Rothericks and uh, are we able to get there before needing a long rest, or no? 
Well, I mean, you guys are in the condition you're in, so the point is, is our, the question really becomes, are you going to take a long rest somewhere before going back to Rotherick's? I can leave, I can leave it on you, Serena, because I'm surprised. I, mean, I, I know this is going to piss a lot of people off, but I'm still sitting at 26 out of my 35. I need a shred. Why would that piss anybody off? <laughs> Says the dead guy. <laughs> no, I was like... You know what? Like, the the boss saw the threats. It, it all it all made sense. Like, don't. Oh no, I I know. I just I like I said. I hate leaving people behind. If I if I thought I could have gotten to people and loaded people up with health potions, but I, I felt like the minute I, I poked my head out, I was gonna get lit the fuck up. So yeah. Are you suffering yeah. survival guilt? Is that what I'm hearing there, Sean? Are you surviving yeah, sur survivor? Are you having survivor guilt? Yeah, I am. Uh, uh, I am definitely a street urchin in trying to make sure I get through there. Serena, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I'm. I'm on the back of you. Like, if, I mean, I think we had the Rodericks and have a good little conversation. I mean, the thing that the thing that bugged me up. <coughs> if he knew about it, he wouldn't have sent in. At least I don't think he would have sent in. Rigor and Markham. Yeah. To their deaths. That I don't think he knew just how bad this was, um, and I think we can confront him pretty strongly in terms of like, dude, what the hell? Like, yeah, like we've we've got bodies laying on the ground behind us. We got three guys down. We don't know what happened to your dudes. Like, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're <laughs> what are you doing? I I, I just the Markham and Rigger have the the good sense to run. I mean, it's not for us to decide now. We're on the horse and heading out. I mean, I, 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 yeah. the question is, do you want to take a rest before we head back to his house? Do you think we're we're walking into a fight there? Do you think he sent all four, of, all of us, to our deaths? I absolutely need a short rest. Uh, after that, it is entirely possible that it is a trap. In that case, I guess I'm going to try and lay low near the house if you want to go in and like pace it or if uh he wants the two of us to go in and try to confront him i mean how long do you need for your short rest is that a four hour one hour one hour yeah. and oh. i only sleep for four hours a day thanks to my nice cloak so that's another thing all right well then let's you want to give you your short rest, and then the question is, do we both want to go in, or do you want just me to go in and act like you are not with us either? That way we save you in reserve, or what's your, what are you, what are you thinking here? I mean, obviously we're hollering this at each other as we're rolling back in yeah. the, on, the, on the back of the horse. Um, Got to get a screen capture of Dooley sucking on that penis. <laughs> Listen, you. It I'll kill you it's again. Floppy. Um, or do you just want to post up somewhere and, and, and get a full rest in and and deal with what comes the next day? Uh, I just need a short rest and I'll be back at almost fighting capacity from there. So I, I still have my, uh, what do you call it? I still have my healing potion. I never eat. Yeah, I, I think short rest, keep moving on the road, try to beat them back to Rothrix. If we get there first, even if Rothrix is somehow trying to betray us, he wouldn't have had enough time to get the message. Something that incites upon Doc a couple times over during the whole thing and nags at him the whole way as he rides along and then talks about this with Serena is his badge. And he thinks to himself, what would have happened if he'd stayed behind? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, I. That's just kind of acted I mean, sooner, so his teammate didn't get stabby stabbed. <laughs> I mean, that's. I mean, the, the hard part is that's kind of my background is that that I, you know, I I help those that help me, and and I hate I hate leaving people behind. Like, if we're gonna go for it, we're all in on it. Um, but this was just, I. I hate doing that, but let me ask you. Let me ask you something, Sean. Let yeah. me ask you something honestly. Is this Doc or Sean talking? 
No, that's Doc. I mean, Doc, I mean okay. Doc's background is that he was a street urchin. Someone helped him um, get out of the bad situation, and he owed a debt. Um, my background is that I, you know, I'm 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 somewhat of a reluctant thief, which is why I don't actively steal. It's just kind of if it's there, I take it. If of it's course. not there, um, and then I tend to help the you know I, I tend to help those that help me and so everybody that's been around me has helped me and so I, I don't like to leave that behind right like I like like if 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 I did not think that there was nothing else I was going to be able to do to save them I would not have left I mean that's just I mean we, we saw what happened when I would but it was the same thing on the boat like I got to revive like we got to get this crap done I may die, but we're gonna we're all gonna go down as a team. Okay. So in, so, in this case, it was just <coughs> given the situation. Where do you guys want to go? Uh, short rest then rock the lake. You pull off the road, letting the adrenaline subside. You rest on a stump. You find a squat bit of log, and take a moment. As the adrenaline spi- as the adrenaline finds itself soaking out of your bloodstream back into your body, finding itself degrading slowly away, your heart rate slows along with it. You find yourself able to breathe steady after about 20 minutes, half an hour. You feel extremely hungry. You feel hey, Serena, like- you want this? Uh, you want this potion? I do have one more yet. You keep it. I believe each of us will need this if things do truly get as bad as they have been. I'm going to burn three hit dice and heal 27 HP. Nice roll. With that said, you managed to get your body back under control. You managed to get yourself to some semblance of sanity, physically speaking. From the ragged shaking that was left from the combat to a steady warrior once again. As your heart and mind are once again steady and solid, you find yourselves back on the horse and heading towards Arabelle. As you Travel through the gates. The whole of the town um, is undisturbed, unperturbed. Workers going about their business. Millers, shopkeepers, porters, whomever. Conducting their affairs as they move and uh, (coughs) move and traverse. Taking whatever goods and services that they have to offer to whomever will have them. You come upon a short squat building nestled behind a fence. The guards looking towards you as you come upon. He gives a nod and then goes and opens the gate, pushing it in away. As he looks up towards you, he then realizes something and says, where are the others? And then he looks upon your faces and simply says, you done, I'm sorry. You head inside past the gate as the gate shuts in behind you and the camera jump cuts. Do I have to heal from that short rest? Uh, you guys are back at Roth- back at Rotherick's. Uh and with that said, <coughs> we jump cut back to the dark, the dark, the dark. We're grabbing a beverage. I'll be right back. Yeah, do you think?
Why did I put my notes here? Sorry. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't call him a whiny bitch, Dooley. Who? Which? What? Go on. He can, oh, I, I think he can hear us, but oh, you're complaining that you're frick, you whiny bitch. Hey, man. At the end of the day, I understand the intense emotion that goes with uh, goes with such an intense, you know. Oh, big time. Combat. Yep. Uh, once you get over the death part of it, though, it's like, eh, whatever. Once you're dead, it's not a big deal. ABV rules. Uh, oh my god, I'm gapping so hard here. Um, right. There we go, this is all I was looking at. Well, that's going on. I did have a question. When when we short rest, was I supposed to roll anything for recovery for hit points or no? I know Serena said. Uh, so pretty much you can choose to spend any number of your hit dice. As a rogue, that's a d8. Each one you choose to roll, you roll the d8 and then add your con mod. Mm -hmm. That's how much you heal from them. But then what, what would be the difference? Then I lose that the next time I take a long rest, or...? Uh, pretty much every long rest, you regain up to half of your expend... Uh, up to half of your total hit dice. So, for example, I used 3 to get to 35. Uh, next long rest I take, uh, I used 3 out of 4. I regain 2, so I go back to 3 out of 4 that I can use until next long rest, when if I haven't used any more hit dice, I can just get them all back. Okay, so so then I, if I wanted to use, I could use one then, since I'm only down by like 10. Yeah. Okay, got it. So I can heal. All right. So that's you guys as you head into Rotherick's place, and you can uh, calculate your health there as you will. Yeah. Um, um, if we if we're walking into Roderick's, I think the the, <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna do is just clock him beside his jaw. We'll get back to that. As yeah. you as the gate shuts behind you, we jump cut back to the dungeons where we have a little bit of sunlight filtering down through the opening in the wall. You hear footsteps echoing all around. As in the distance, the silhouette of somebody carrying something comes close. You can see it's a young man carrying a bucket. And he comes forward with a set of keys, and you can see a guard clopping in beside him. As he opens up the gate... Hang on a second, I've fixed that, actually. Way too low. Should be more like this. As he pushes it to the side and drops the fresh bucket in, he picks up the used bucket and leaves out through the gate as the guard closes the gate behind him. As he comes, I'd like to just say, <coughs> uh, hey? can we get something besides meat? Can I get some vegetables? The guard looks at you, gives a scoff, and says, do I look like the chef? You'll get what you get. Then he turns around as he puts his keys away and takes his position across from all the various cells in this corridor. Sitting on a bench aside a small makeshift desk, the hours seem to pass by as the light slowly pulls down along the cell as the sun rises higher and higher. It's around noonish when you hear the footsteps again, and the guard rises up, giving a salute as a robed figure walks past your cell and disappears down the corridor. The guard sits back down. The footsteps echo suddenly further as they uh, come back towards you, and the guard rises again. Yes, sir, he says, and the figure takes a moment with his book in hand as he uh, looks into the cell towards where the two of you sit. 
he says to the guard, are they secured? Yes, sir, they are secured. Very good. Hello in there. Hello? A triangular headed figure. Schumann, you think? No, he's half elven, you think. As he looks in towards you, he's got a wide set, uh, wide set pair of eyes and uh, short black hair cropped to the one side. Uh, it's an odd style that you remember seeing from uh, from the capitals of Cormir around Sembia. He's dressed in a robe that covers his finery, of which he's got a high collar sprouting up, making him look like a tulip with a head. And as he peers into the darkness, he adjusts his nose slightly and then brings one of the rags out to kind of hold against his face. Hello in there. Hello. Did you speak to Are you are you awake? Are you well kept? He says with a smirk. Is, is there uh, is is there like the the duty bucket in here? Yeah. I think that's yeah. the duty one. That was yeah, it totally is a duty bucket. That's here. where they keep the vegetables. That's <laughs> where they grow the vegetables. <laughs> Point being though, um, as he peers in upon you, he looks back towards the guard. And then he says, open it then. The guard says, sir, you heard me, open it. The guard comes forward, jangling with his keys a moment and then locks the door, opening the gate. The fellow steps inside, looking around the cell. And he uh, says, I might have a few questions of either of you. And he uh, opens up his book and he looks into it. Which one of you is mm, Aldis? Is it? Is you? I believe this belongs to you. And he, uh, from his robe's pocket, produces your badge. And he throws it down on the floor. And he looks over towards the other one and says this one must be res ven is it he looks at the badge he tosses it down towards you gentlemen i am the caretaker of the dragons and hand of the marshal here in arabelle what in the fuck are you doing in this cell um i'm not sure uh knocked out and I woke up here indeed I'll remind you that your position as a mercenary though an affront to the dragons is precarious at this point but we have questions that require answers we have heard some stories however we are not uh, not privy to the whole of it we believe. We are the dragons. We are not beholden to any particular mercantile group. And Arabelle, as you might imagine, is so full of uh, such interests. He leans in towards Aldous and says this directly into your face. So many interests that we would like to understand. Have I made myself clear, gentlemen? I, uh, uh, I want to see my scar. Like, where I was stabbed. As you look down towards yourself, you can see like there is a faint line that shows this uh, severing point. It's a little bit wider in the chest where he plunged into you. And as you look down upon it, you suddenly have like this momentary flashback, like PTSD, where you feel the icy cold of the metal drilling into you, severing every part of you inside. And as you look up the line, it shows the camera cuts to like a quick montage of it just sawing through you. And then you flash back. Yeah, it's there. There's the scar. Um, so I'm gonna tell him I believe so, and then I'm gonna say, um, do you believe you could 
take us somewhere where we could speak about such uh, things that have happened? Perhaps. However, the question truly becomes whether or not I wish to. If you are of no value, then you are of no value and you will rot here. If you have committed a crime, you will rot here. If, in fact, you are still worthwhile for that badge, then you shall have fine quarters as befits any affront to the dragons. So regale me. Tell me what has happened to cause several wagons full of so much gold minus two that were demolished in what seemed to be rather violent explosions to dot the countryside some several miles outside of our fair city. Well, before I answer that question, can I ask you a question? And um, would you be able to explain to me whose gold it was that was left all over the countryside? That is an excellent question as well. And I would hope to answer that with some of your answers. And he just glares at you, staring into you. As hunters are, to look after some people. And whatever happened at that point, after looking after them, we were supposed to do certain things. Certain things happened that went the way they were supposed to, certain things didn't, and there was an explosion. We then, some of us fell, and I'm not sure who on which side is still standing. And that's what I'll give him. Does, does, um, does he, does he have any kind of symbols on his room? He like does. There... He's got uh, quite a few, as a fa- as a matter of fact. Um, up and down and his uh, robes trim, you can see several crests of uh, the various royal houses. Oh, sweet! Thank you. Right on. Um, the several crests of the various royal houses of Cormier. Um, and woven in amongst them, you can see the name Obersker, stylized in the filigree of, uh, oh, sorry, in the um, in the embroidery. And as uh, his back's to you, you can see on the back, he's got the crest of Arabelle uh, in, a, in a combination with uh, the crest of the purple dragons. They're kind of um, just sitting side by side in a uh, stylized circle. Kind of like a yin and yang, if you will. I think you know more than you do. And I think you know the players involved. He, uh... What, what do you want us to, to tell you that you already know? He looks towards you all, uh, the the two of you. He looks between the two of you, one after the next, and uh, and gives a nod and says, "I wish to know a great many things. Specifically, who does the money belong to? Is an excellent question. We'll start who there. How about how about how about what organization the money's been funneled through? Certainly. And he opens up his book. Let's start there. In fact." What, do, what does your book say? He gives a slow sigh. And he folds the book. And then he smashes it across your face. With a 6 plus bonus. He's still... Actually, sorry, with advantage, actually. So 10 plus bonus. Uh, what's your armor class with no armor? Just dex. 14, I think. Okay. 14. He's not, he's not going to hit you too capably. As he swats you across the head... Uh, you barely managed to get it, get away from the SWAT, the wind causing your hair to tussle. I As try and like put the cuffs up. So, so they go off the cuffs. He takes a swing towards you, um, and retracting it, he opens it back up, 
and gets ready with his quill again. Guard a seat if you could. The guard gives a nod and brings over a chair after a brief moment, placing it inside the cell. And a flagon of mead if you could. And the guard gives a stiff nod and uh, closes the door. The fellow sits on the chair with his quill in hand and his book open. And he so says, just the three of us now? Just the three of you. Sweet. You and, uh, and him. The gate is locked. I want to make that clear. That's you fine. are uh, you are still in your cell and the door is locked. Yep. I'll be right back. So you already know that the Iron Throne is involved. He gives a nod at this. And you know that it's the foot. He uh, gives a slow nod at this and then starts to write in the book. Or was How it the do you hand? feel about it being that organization? He uh, gives a nod and says, I am quite accustomed to the mercantile doings here in Arabelle. It is my role to police them after a fashion. In this case, something has come to our attention and a long string of events seems to have quite the connection. However, I would employ you further. Whose gold is it? Regis. I'm sorry? You are, you already know you 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 found him there. Burgess attacked us. He gives a slow nod at this, uh, and flips a page over, checks something, and then scrawls something down. Flips the pages back and says, "I am not aware of this Burgess specifically." Uh, but again, my question still stands: To whom does the gold? belong to. What is this marshal's name again? He, uh... Hey? His name. Burgess wasn't the marshal of Arabelle. No, no, no. This guy, he's the marshal, right? No. He said he's the oh. hand of the marshal. Hand of the marshal. What's he's, his name? He's the caretaker of the dragons and hand of the marshal. Do you ask him his name? Yeah. He, uh, looks towards you and says, Oh, my apologies. My name is Uska. I am Muscap Jemra. And uh, as he says his last name, you realize this guy's actually related somehow, some way to the Queen's family. Hey, the Queen of Cormir. Can you, can you say that name again, Dooley? His name is Yuskup Jemra. U S K U P. Uskup. And then Jemra is with a J. So, you already know the players involved. Why are you shaking down the little people? Um, sorry, why are you shaking down what, did you say? Why are you shaking down the little people? The, we're, uh, pawns, we're, we're pawns in, the, in this. He raises an eyebrow at this and says, and uh, closes the book. And he uh, simply says to you, <clears throat> Sorry, what's Resin's last name? Salkarin. Salkarin? Salkarin, yeah. Salkarin. He, uh, he wags his quill at you and says, Mr. Salkarin, might I remind you that in this stead, you are an official of the kingdom. As such, I am, after a fashion, your boss. As caretaker of the dragons in Arabelle, you answer to me for jobs, for orders, for needs that the purple dragons may have. 
of what that badge makes you. Do you understand your role here? I understand what you think. Do you my remember role the oath there? you took when you acquired that badge? I do remember my oath. He gives a nod. Oh, so few of you that do these days. Never mind your badge, but your contractual obligations as well. Let's not forget that you are alive currently. That means that this kingdom has seen to it you were raised. Your body capable of being so, you were brought to. Shame about the other fellow. His body was far too gone to be... to have anything done for it. Tomas? Which, which fellow? He says this with a, uh, a somberness that belies his stoicism. He says, we tried to do what we could. However, your companion, the other one, he uh, flips a few pages back, uh, scanning down the page, he uh, eventually, hang on a sec, where is this? Do, 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 please hold, thank you. Sometimes I should just trust my instinct. <laughs> um, he gives a nod. Yes, Mr. Everhart. It's, unfortunately, is not... He's not with us any longer. His contract is up, I suppose. He says this trying to crack a joke, although he himself doesn't really take it as uh, a point of laughter. <clears throat> um, as he uh, as he gives you a bit of empathy over this breaking the character of the stoic hand of the marshal and caretaker of the dragons showing a bit of humanity for a moment um, you look upon him as he looks at you and says if there was something that we could do we would do it that is our calling we protect the people, we protect the land, we protect the royal families, we protect our interests. You are an interest. Mr. Everhart was an interest. So, the money was being funded, was, was taken from the military, is being used to fund a war effort by the Iron Crown. He scrawls a bit down. Continue. He looks up from his pages Burgess and as he says this. was in charge of, of transporting and, and orchestrating the funds and whoever above him and whoever above her. Her. There was a her and there was a him. You speak of, must be this one, I'll assume. The archer that we found in the field? Yes. He makes a scrawling there. As uh, he looks up from this page, uh, scroll as he's scrolling away the note, you guys hear the footsteps of the guard coming back. He's got in his hands uh, a mug and a flagon. And as he comes forth, the fellow looks over. Well, that won't do. I only see one mug in your hand. And bring us some fresh foods and fruits and what. This may be a while. I need these we'll need gentlemen vegetables. strong. <laughs> Sorry, what do you want? <laughs> we'll need vegetables. He gives a nod. Juicy ones, of course. The camera pans against this to show as uh, the questioning continues. Echoing out, sort of like in Blade Runner, where Harrison Ford is talking, uh, giving the Voight Kampf. And then it crossfades away to show Rotherick's face as he looks upon the two figures that darken his doorway as he sits alongside um, as he sits alongside his attendant, who uh, looks towards you as you enter in, and Rotherick stands up. 
It was returned. Good. Where... Where are the others? What has come of this? And he steps forward, stumbling as his legs have fallen asleep from the sitting. Yeah, right cross to the chin. As you step in towards, make me a roll. Uh, I guess I'm just rolling a 20, d20. Yes, sir. And it's going to be uh, dexterity plus proficiency. <laughs> Jesus, six plus, I guess, three or plus five? Yeah, three plus two, so five. Yeah, 11. With all the intention of the world, you come in ready to just give him a quick right cross. And as you come in towards the feeble old man, he kind of winces as you just let it go at the last. Angry with yourself, even still. As you stare ahead of him and he says, what, what happened? What is... Roderick, uh, dude, we got lit up. I mean, we, 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 we've lost three guys. Well, I'm not I, I, no, I have no idea. Like, we were getting blown up by whoever the floating dude with horns was in the middle of that entire party. Like, we were banging away, and stuff just went sideways. So what in the hell did you send us into? When last we saw them, Markham and Rieger were alive. They were awaiting the approach of the Cormier army. You see him, like, fall backwards as he's considering all this, and he's, like, having palpitations. His face goes peaked, and he kind of, like, sits back down in the chair. Oh. Oh. Oh, I should have sent more men. I should have sent more men. (coughs) The money. The shipment. Where is it? Where is it gone? Uh, 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 uh. You're you're, you're, you're you're parking a goal. You're too worried about money and not worried enough about our guys. Uh, The money will lead to so many more deaths. Countless deaths. The sons and daughters of this city and so many others will be washed. I can I can count. We've got three already. He steps forward, bringing himself Thank back you. under control as he steadily lets his uh, would-be heart attack subside. And he looks up and he says, "Perhaps we can rectify this. Perhaps I can bargain with Amarant." Is she still here? She's imprisoned in the cellar down below. Do you believe for a moment that that would work? I... I don't know. But I feel the sudden urge to reach out. Perhaps to... By the gods. And he looks towards you and... Gives a nod. I am deeply sorry for your companions. They were stalwart heroes. We must solve this in some fashion. And I will have to consult with the other players to see the best course of action. Well, here's the deal. Everything is in quite a big mess. I mean, we we didn't stop everything, but we definitely didn't leave things clean. So they're going to take some time to pick up all their pieces and find whatever the hell res didn't blow up over half the countryside. Blow up over half the countryside? He... he, he. Allow me to start from the beginning here. What exactly has happened to the shipment? So, in order for us to do a surprise, we follow the caravan, realize that they were fairly well settled when another band tried to attack them and they leveled them pretty evenly. Uh, working with our teammates, we blew up uh, a good portion of the, uh, of the caravan and then proceeded to try and take it over. Uh, we were making pretty good headway until uh, whoever that floating dude was uh, came out and lit us all up. 
uh, after losing uh, Rez and Aldis and Tomas, um, we uh, took the last opportunity to hightail it out of there, uh, hoping that we'd be followed behind by uh, Markham and Rigger. We kind of hope we'd meet them here with you because uh, we were all kind of running out of time. I mean. You're a bang at the door as it suddenly Jeeves start with a start looks over towards and then back towards Rotherick and Rotherick looks up at you. And the door opens up a moment later as Markham bursts in. Rigger comes following in after. How close am I to uh, Roderick? Uh, you're across the room from him. Like he's right. he's sat back down on his couch. Um, yeah, you're by the kitchen entryway. And I'm, uh, not, Markham clo and I'm, Rigger. Not, clo I'm not close enough to grab him as Markham's coming in. No, no, he's uh, just he's okay. just a square away from you. Shit. I I want to try and steady Markham and Rigger if. They seem to have been beaten up or uh, haggard from all of their travels to get back here. Okay. Um, they look they look like they've had a, a day. Oh, wait. No, hold on. Let me think about something for a second here. Uh, no. Markham comes in. Rigger's not there. Sorry. My bad. As we were, uh, Markham comes in with a flustered look on his face, a uh, couple nicks and bruises, but otherwise he doesn't seem uh, too beat up, too banged up. As he uh, walks into the chamber slowly and steadily, looking slowly around at everybody, he takes a deep breath and steadies himself and then walks across the room. What in the fuck was that? You, you left us. Left us behind and raced away. And he looks down at Roderick and Roderick looks up at him. What do you mean? What do you mean? They, they fucked right off. She jumps into our wagon, pitches it over to the side. And then grabs one of the horses off the shipment and fucks off. Rig is taken by the dragons. Gods knows what the thrones say to anybody. I stayed in the bushes there as these two cowards just raced off. I've never seen anything quite like it. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you need to calm down there. Listen, you. We, we, no, the no, last no, thing we, I we, saw no, was your no, tiny no, head we, disappear we, over the horizon, leaving us behind. Rigger is in custody. There were horses. You could have run. I called for you to run. We had a job. And at the very least, if it's going tits up, we should have some idea of what the aftermath is to be. <laughs> we but need to we, appeal. We, uh, listen, if you don't think that we did enough, we lost three girls. Listen, little man, you shut it. No. You, and he starts to come up towards you, yeah, like, no, just no, like no. squares right off. You yeah, left us no. out there to die, man. Dude, dagger's out. There's, there's no discussion going on here. I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> try to, I'm, I'm going to intimidate him. You okay. do not know of what you speak. The blade flashes out as the orc gets up in his face. Jeeves suddenly backs away, and Rotherick simply sighs, "Gentlemen." As Markham glowers down towards you. And you stare up against him, the reflection of Serena imploringly standing over the both of you, shining in the blade. A tense moment passes as you can see Markham just staring down into you. And then his eyes just slightly soften. They've got rigor. And he gives you. Listen. He just gives Who a shake of his head and backs up. Who the hell was the floating guy? Just he simply does this as he walks away. How the fuck should I know? 
We're going after the fucking throne. They could have hired anybody. They're guarding however much gold. And Roderick just uh, gives a nod. It was Crow, most likely. It's Crow himself came to see the shipment through. What happened, Markham? Markham uh, looks over towards Serena and then at Doc and then down to Roderick and gives a nod. Whiskey, if you got it. Ale, if you don't. Jeeves, startled, comes to. Yes, of course, sir. And excuses Thank himself you. out of the kitchen. Coming back a second later with a bottle uh, uh, and glass on a tray and then looks towards... Uh, Doc imploringly as he sets the tray down. Yeah, I'll take one with him. He uh, disappears and says, I'll get the glasses. <coughs> Roderick shouts after him. Set the kettle on then. Markham looks over towards uh, Roderick and starts to explain about how all he could see was the conversation occurring between uh, as the the riders came up, and the figure, the fellow, the flying figure, walked up to them and started conversing. After a brief spell, they grabbed a hold of him. He threw them off, started shouting. They backed up. Couldn't believe it. The others that rode past closed in on Riga. She thought, she thought fit to perhaps try to grab one of the carts, but that wasn't going to happen. I knew better. I told her to come with, she wouldn't listen. Dragons, they rounded up the carts. So far as I could see, comically enough, gold is with them. So, that's really where it ends. I watched them take away the carts and rigor and the haunted figure demanded that he have his whatever I couldn't quite hear but after a moment it was all over the dragons just escorted the gold away and left the haunted figure there well then I don't I don't think we're completely out of this fight Markham looks down towards the glass and then remembering what he asked for uh, hungrily snatches up the bottle and undoing the top pours a healthy amount in and then uh, as the tray clatters with him putting the bottle down, he shoves it over towards Serena and Doc and starts just taking a long haul off the glass. Hey. Before, I take, before I take my drink, I am still part of the dragons. And we can go have this discussion. The important thing is that the money is not in the hands of the throne to start with. The second thing is that if we know where Rigor is, we know where we can get her back. And I think we have a good start. I wish to clarify with you, if I may. <coughs> when the riders were approaching, I saw that Doc was nearly cut in two by the knights that had cornered him. You and the rigor were standing unhealthy. The horses were behind us. I called for you to spread out, to make a run for it. It was my decision to grab Doc and run. He had no say in that. I acted to save him from the night. I saw that the two of you were alone. I thought that you could have run. If there is anything we can do to save Rigor, I give you my word that we shall. But I acted to save as many as I could that day. Markham gives a, gives a shake of his head and then a nod of his head and then just takes another slug off the glass and puts it down and then looks over at Roderick and Roderick gives a slow nod. 
before saying, it's all political now. It's all to be political now. Unfortunately, I will have to speak to my partners. If what you say is true, then we must act very quickly indeed. He gives a sigh and thinks about it. The throne will not stop. The throne will attempt to take the gold from even the dragons themselves. However, I should think the even even the throne cannot get away with robbing the dragons of evidence. Well, then why don't we make sure that dragons know what's coming? Roderick gives a nod as uh, Jeeves shows up with his tea and taking the glass or taking the cup from him. <coughs> he says, <coughs> as he chokes on his tea. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, holy shit. <coughs> As he uh, takes the cup and gives it a slow sip, he says, Warning them may serve. Warning them may be a smart idea. I agree. It will buy us time if the throne does not hit them too hard, too quickly. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking we leave our options open. I'm thinking that we get there, we warn them, we tell them that rigor was not on the other side of this, and more importantly, when stuff hits the fan, if things seem to disappear, that happens in a battle. Might not be a bad position to be in to be the only ones with foreknowledge and have our heads on. Just an option. Markham, where did they take the gold? Did they bring it back? Or did they take it further up the trail? And Markham says, They took it along to the outposts, as a matter of fact. I think they crossed the Masonette Bridge, but where directly afterwards they took it, I'm not quite sure. There's no way I could tell from this distance. Fairly certain the outposts on the other side. Dragons got them all up and down. I'll find I'm not sure of a lock, a lockdown in that area, but I'm sure they have one. And like I said, sir, it's so fucking political. And as he uh, does this, punching the table and the glass and bottle rattle, he just sits back. I'm sorry, nigga, he says to himself, and then gets up and uh, walks out of the room past Jeeves and Jeeves kind of goes to say something and then thinks better of it and simply stands resolute. Stop All right, um, uh, so I'm I'm gonna grab the bottle and uh, and pour Markham another drink. Um, All right, you uh, you know what? You stop him from leaving the room as uh, as he punches and then you start pouring him the drink. So he doesn't get up and walk out. He uh, looks forward towards it. Gives a nod and takes it in his hand. Slowly sips upon it and then uh, lets it rest against his knee. Rotherick at this point says, Then it is clear what I must do. I will reach out to my partners. We will discern where this outpost may reside. Chances are if they do have a lockdown, then Rigor will be there as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at Markham and say, we will get Rigor back. Markham looks up towards you and gives a half-hearted smile and tips his glass once again. Doesn't drink, but just stares down into the bottle, glancing into the glass and then out the window at the people passing by. The camera pans Riz. against Serena's face as you. Resvin is gone, but... There is a chance that Albus still lives as well. Markham suddenly looks up towards you. I just realized, I'm sorry. You've lost people, haven't you? I didn't realize. And he uh, takes another 
Long haul off the glass. We got fucked. He says slowly. So, anybody saying anything else there? Bro, what are we waiting for here with, uh... The camera pans against uh, Roderick's face as he gets Roderick. up and says, I suppose I have to conduct a meeting then. I shall return. How much time do you need? Only a few hours, at the best. One All moment. Right. Yeah. Oh, Yeah, I mean that's the that's the best I can do is 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 long rest to get settled back up and get ready for this train wreck. But yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for nothing, Doc. Dude, you were you were <laughs> deader than dead. <laughs> you know what? I I, I think uh, yeah, yeah, he had my number. Yeah, not, not for nothing. It was really funny because I was thinking about, as you heard, I was thinking about how to get there. And then I was like, if I go out there, all I'm going to do is draw attention. And he's going to light me up and light up all of you at the same point. It'll be another fireball or yeah. be a fucking shit yep. show. Everyone's dead. Lightning ball. Then fire. And if, if, I hadn't, if I hadn't pulled a, uh, a Fauci and thrown my, uh, my, my uh, silence bomb... 30 feet to the left, we all would have been in a little bit different situation, but yeah, I jacked that one up. I mean, what? The, the dice are what they are, right? Like, I, would I, I failed my save and, and so on. Like, I it, am it makes for good story storytelling. Oh, sorry, I'm, Charlie, go ahead. I'm so sorry that I forgot I could have thrown the potion as a bonus action. No worries, man. Like, it's, you know what? Like, the dice are what they are. This this story happened because of that. <laughs> my, I mean, that's I mean, that's definitely something that that for my character is is kind of a kind of something that holds down on me. That I, I don't. It, it it was it was literally at that point of if I don't do something here, I got I got a rock because there's nothing I can do. I mean, yeah. obviously getting lit up at one point. If I if I showed my head and got lit up, it was going to be 27 points of damage and I was going to be dead. Just blame yeah. it on Julie. It no, was, it was a good so, so, I just want to wrap this up. I, I, got a bunch, I got a bunch of stuff left to go. We only got about 15 minutes. So, All right. Bit. All right. Um, camera's going to cut against the scene uh, to show back in the cell. Uh, cell, as you guys uh, have spent now hours with this guy. Um, <clears throat> no, sorry, hang on a sec. That didn't come out right. There we are. <clears throat> <clears throat> he steadily asks various questions about the shipment, about various characters involved. He asks, what do you know? What do you know about a uh, Marshal Laramis? Laramis. Wait, isn't he from your hometown? No, I think, um... No, I'm, I'm, I'm asking him, right? I'm like... Hey, wait, it's, isn't he from your hometown? We simply wish to know if this is, uh, we simply wish to know if this is uh, related in some way. Do you understand? Related? Do you know about this Marshal Laramus? Can you tell me anything about him? We, we met him. You and, did? Uh, how, yeah. how recently did you meet him? week ago? Two weeks ago? Approximately two weeks ago for Mr. Westman. Laramus Westman. Yes. yes. He taps on the page for a moment. Yes, actually you, you can see that we signed in and signed some equipment out of his armory. What was that, Deadlock? He 
gives a nod and points his uh, quill towards you. It was indeed. He is dead. Did you know this? How do you feel about that? I am saddened for his widow. The man led a hard life. His son, he lost his son early on. And now uh, she has nobody. So yet another story in the Cormirian backwaters, huh? Uh, <clears throat> By chance... Was, was he a purple dragon or was he... Was he another organization? He was very much a purple dragon. He was a marshal of the purple dragons. He was a marshal of the purple dragons. Marshal of Deathloop. Okay. Capable how fellow. Much, how much are we telling him, Isaac? How much have you, have you told him? Because <laughs> I was like, super vague and then you started to fill in some spaces and I was like, mm. <laughs> So I think maybe you know a bit more. Is this related? No, I, I, I said we signed into his armory and and got some equipment. We talked to him in his office and he told us to leave town. Now, I just want to make this clear. You guys are like... You guys are paid cops. You guys are kind of cops after a fashion. You're not Purple Dragons proper, but yeah. sorry, you're like detectives, right? The contract, yeah. And I don't know if my memory serves right, but I believe that Laramus had us following the money, the, the platinum. He sent us off to Arabelle, right? He sent us to, to go try die. To get killed. To... Yeah, he was going to send us off to get killed, but he was. We're, we're, okay, so we're, we're talking meta stuff right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're actually yeah. not. Yeah, not talking about this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so he yeah. sent us off to go get killed. Yeah. Right? He's the one that was embezzling mm -hmm. a good portion of it. Mm -hmm. With, uh, what's her name? Armorant. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but none, but I imagine that the purple dragons above board don't know about that, but he said yeah. this is SOP. Yeah. And that's why I keep asking this guard how he gauging how he feels about Jeffrey Yeah. Like, does... Okay. He really didn't give a shit about okay, it. Okay, so so we're back in game. Sorry, Dooley. No, it's all good. You guys gotta figure your shit. That's fine. Yeah. So we, we signed we signed in to his armory. He sent us out of town. And that's it. Give me your dumb look for. I simply have difficulty believing that the marshal of Deadlook allowed you to root through his armory for free. There must have been a reason. Where did you go Cause, after Deadlook? Because we, because we showed him our badges. Where did you go after Deadlook? We went up to. We went up to Arabelle. In Arabelle. We traveled through... Which is... Evening Star? Our hometown, is it not? You stopped in Evening Star after Deadlook? We didn't stop. We just traveled through. And we came to Arabelle. I believe we're in Arabelle. There was no other travel that you conducted around that two-week period? Um... What's that other, what's that other town? Gentlemen, think hard. I would hate to unearth any details outside of your own testimony, being that you are trusted members. I definitely don't feel trusted. Well, trust is so easily broken, my good man. He closes the book again and says, I am Glory, Mr. Salkura. Understand that my role here is not a favored one. However, I am 
appreciate the hard work that you have put in for protecting this kingdom from the brigands and bandits in the King's Forest. Here I sit before you, trying to do my job, which accentuates your job and relies on your job. Please, help me. And he points towards the flagon of mead that sits on the floor and the bowl of fresh apples and celery. And says, I have done my part. Show me your work. And he opens the book back up. So far we've established the money was for the war machine of the Iron Crown. The individual we have in custody <coughs> is so affiliated, I feel free to let you know. He is um, not been except he's not been so forthcoming as I would like, but he has revealed a few tidbits uh, in his, his demands. Hey, I, I, well, I'm sorry. What is his name? His name was Crow, as a matter of fact. Oh. Draken Crow. And so far as we can tell, he is an officer of quite high value in the throne organization. And he flips the page over as he looks upon it. I am pleased with the details you've provided thus. And he closes the book and he gets up uh, from the stool, cracking his back and uh, holding the book at his side. He opens the gate to the cell and closes it behind himself. And he says, I am not the final decision maker as he closes the gate. He says that honor falls to the marshal himself. However, I do advise, I will state that you have been most helpful. He looks over towards, uh... Well, I hope you know... Oh, Aldous doesn't even have a last name. Aldous, what's your character's last name, dude? Aldous. Aldous, Aldous, like Mario, Mario? Yeah. Uh... You've never... Okay, no, it's fine. I've never even thought of one, yeah. That's fine. It's, actually, a, it's an elf thing. It's like Madonna. You know, whatever. I noticed it right now. I was it's like, exactly what it prints. Yeah. It's like Madonna. He, uh, he leaves the badges on the floor. And he says, hold on to your badges. This, my advisement, you should be requiring them in the near future. Trace the money. I fully intend to, Mr. Salcora. And perhaps I will be asking you to do the same in short order. His voice echoes from down the hall as he walks away and out. The camera pans against your faces. I want to look at him and say, we believe we have since way knew. And he stops as he's walking away. And he turns around. And he walks back, and as the camera dollies in behind Aldous, standing uh, further forward towards the bars than Resvin, the camera dollies over past Resvin to show Aldous as the stoic figure, replete in his finery and his tulip collar, steps in front of you and squaring off. He says, tell me more then, please. And it cuts from there. As you start to detail out what? What do you tell him actually real quick? Um, I don't really want to tell him like everything organizationally wise, but I do want to kind of fill him in on where the money has been going as far as what we've seen in the sort of like what we've seen like with uh, what's from Armor Ant and the warehouses. The, the warehouse both here, the dock warehouse and kind of the warehouse that got burnt. Um, and that's as, kind of as far as I want to go. Like I don't want to like, I I wanna I wanna retrace the archer back to that warehouse, and I don't know if we, I don't believe we've given up Armorant's name yet. So I will only believe it as a, the female figure because I think that's what we called her. Okay, well, so and, far he thinks that's Malakanth. 
if you caught I know that. that's what he thinks, yeah. but I'm just gonna like that's gonna be the only part where if he catches that part, he'll notice that they're both right there at the same spot at the same time. All right. Um. So basically, you leave Armand altogether out of it, but you tell him more or less everything that happens. I, I leave it. her name out of it, but I give the kind of the presence of a female that's in charge is there at that time. Oh, okay. So you just you play dumb on the name. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Which that's is said, consistent with what I do. Yeah, no, that's fine too. Um, okay, he digs on that and the camera jump cuts from there showing Rotherick's place. Um, it's been it's been a day and uh, the sun is setting as uh, it shows through the window, Doc peering out with a drink, drink in his hand out towards the wall of, and the gate. And suddenly you watch as the gate is exploded open. Slowly, you watch as a single guard, a single fellow dressed in the markings of the throne, walks through the doorway, followed in behind a moment later by a frail looking young man. He's human and he's got a way, like imagine the mechanist Okay, but like with a couple pounds on him. Walks in through the door, dressed in slimming black clothes with a simple chain of the throne around his neck. And the single uh, guard has a uh, bandana around his head. There's a couple guards behind, but this guy's obviously the bodyguard. The guy's got a bandana uh, around his head. Um, his chin is small but square, and he looks like he ain't from around here. He uh, walks in, stoic-like, and steps to the one side and simply looks down at the floor with his arms crossed as this fellow walks in, and Jeeves looks towards him and says, Oh, shit. Uh, oh, yeah, hold on, he's in the house. He's not, he's not like, outside. I no, he, I walks, he walks in through the gate, and a couple of the guards that come towards suddenly just back up and off as... Uh, you watch the guards behind walk in. They've each got heavy crossbows, like just ready to go. And uh, to your surprise, you see behind suddenly the escorted figure of Rotherick and another figure. And as the fellow comes walking in through the hall, he looks around and then stares across and says, hello there. My name is Isaac. And as he stares at you, standing there with the drink in your hand, Roderick comes close and he moves past him and into the chamber and alongside you. This fellow Isaac walks into the chamber alongside Roderick and you watch as the fellow who was with Roderick follows in after them. The bodyguard doesn't move. The couple guards outside, they mill about for the moment. And uh, Rotherick looks over towards the two of you and says, things seem to have changed. And the slim black dressed, black clad figure takes a pair of spectacles from his shirt and puts them on his face and says, I should think so. Gentlemen, you have done well in completely Fucking our efforts. I am formerly known as the Eye. And I would like to find our goal. And Rotherick gives a shake of his head and looks over towards him and then back at you and gives a nod. Plans have changed. Then he looks down towards the floor as it cuts to black.
Circles within circles within circles. Roderick's none fucking pleased, by the way. You can see that. He's pissed. And his partner, an old, uh, an older figure as well, but maybe a little younger than Roderick, um, and a little, definitely a lot more portly, uh, stands to the one side with his arms folded, clearly perturbed by the situation, but not so plussed. He's not, uh, he's not fearing. He's not fearful, but he's, uh, he's irate at the whole of the situation. Doesn't say anything. And you don't recognize him. But that, the credits roll. Dun, dun, dun. Sean, would you like, would you hate, would you run some east? I, I loved all of it. I mean, it was it was fantastic. I mean, uh, you know, uh, that decision point is going to sit with me for a while um, of whether or not to get on the back of the horse. Um, and I think that's fantastic. I think that's the best part about of all of it. Um, you know, trying to figure out where to roll with it from here is going to be tough. Um, but I'm glad that uh, uh, as much as my character doesn't know it, I'm glad that everyone is still in it. Um, I just got to figure out how the hell we get everyone, get the band back together. But yeah, no, I, I, I thought it was fantastic. I mean, I think it was a, a great sticking point. And I think it's something that hopefully will help me for my character development um, going forward, given his background. Fair enough. Uh, Charlie, would you like to say it was Brent's the least? Uh, well, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. There was so much going on in terms of uh, this, the deaths, the uh, the new characters, the twists. It's it's all very exciting. Uh, I it's not really a criticism, but just like this week for like the second half, it was a ton of pay up, a ton of setups. I'm not sure uh, where things are gonna go, but I'm excited for the payoffs. Fair enough. Justin, what's your like? What's your hate? What's your purpose least? Uh, like the whole thing. I felt action packed, honestly, the whole time. Um, there was combat in the beginning by the by the RP stuff going on. Forgot there was even combat in the beginning, but there was. Um, just everything happening, even like at points where, like, because I went away, but I was still listening on the phone. Even like at points where they were had stuff going on, I'm still like listening, like paying attention to what's going on. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah. It was it just felt really, like I said, action packed this time. Honestly, Fair uh, don't really have any complaints. Yeah. Uh, Fair definitely don't. I don't know, probably Rez will say the same. No complaints about falling into battle or any of that. Um, yeah. And. My man Ricky, would you like would you hate was your purpose at least? Um that penis thing I don't like. <laughs> um <laughs> sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um I I hate feeling impotent. And and this entire session made me feel impotent both in combat and story-wise just uh i don't have enough of the like yeah i i, I just feel ineffectual <laughs> and impotent and and it's just the nature of of being caught up in the story in something that's bigger than you I will also temper that, if I may. Dice rolls uh, kind of kiboshed you at the beginning there. Did they ever? And you know what? Like, <sighs> to be fair, to be fair. Yeah, you know, but I mean, like, <sighs> oh god, excuse me. You know, it's it's uh, like at any time, it's almost fifty-fifty to hit, right? Like the the nature of of of, of the odds in the game are are kind of neutral and or or sometimes stacked against us and and that's that's okay it's just the other hand so it's, it's rolling with it Fair enough. I, I think i did grow more as a, a person and a player um because of it 
but man, growth opportunities suck ass. Uh, I, uh, I like the pacing. I like the combat at the beginning. Um, I like the way it went. Uh, I have to admit, I didn't know what to expect in terms of the aftermath. Um, the army showing up was absolutely uh, planned from the get-go, so just so nobody thinks I did that because you guys were on the ropes or something like that. Um, and to be honest, midway through the fight or at near and near the end there, when it seemed like I could TPK you outright, I thought to myself, hey, maybe I should just TPK everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shut down Thursday for a while. Fuck it. Why not? Take a holiday. <laughs> um, but no, I was like, uh, no, we can, we can develop this further. Um, from the from the army thing and we'll see uh what you guys do with it and so we saw how that went i think it was pretty good um it does seem very movie and cinematic you know what with I mean? the uh with the intrigue going on and the layers of it um like you said there's a whole bunch of setups so uh or like you said there's a whole bunch of setups so we'll see how that plays out in, in the finality, right? We'll see how that, uh, how those pay off, so to speak. Um, yeah, it I like... seems like a Jack Reacher kind of film where there's like all these levels of of crazy unraveling. intensity and whatnot. Yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm really digging it. I'm uh, I'm enjoying weaving the story, so to speak, and uh, and setting up challenges for myself that way with with further levels of intrigue. Um, with this Yuskup guy that you guys have been forming. I mean, the funny thing about it is you got two guys in a cell who are uh, ex extolling for the dragons who currently have the gold and have, like, no interest in it. They're completely objective, but they're hidden away, too. And so now on the other front, you've got... Um, and that's the thing, is, like, the, the dragons aren't stupid. They've just found this. They're not going to end... Not to mention this fucking clown is going to... Uh, the this guy right here, he's going to demand for his gold. Oh, it's our gold. That's my gold. That's my shipment. And they're like, ah, you know what? Hit the magistrate and talk to him. So just to get meta about it. The dragons did their duty. They were cops. They fucked off. And so then this guy shows up. They got you in custody. And like I said, the reason you're still alive is because uh, contractuals stipulate that if you drop in service, then you can be brought back uh, for a fee. But also... Um, they need you for the witness part of things. So is it sponsorship? Are you going to get a bill for it? We'll see in due course. But uh, point being, you guys get... Uh, is it uh, 650 experience? Sweet. Had, had I, I... I'm just curious. Had I misread the situation? I figured because the... Uh, the uh, because Crow was apparently pretty keen on surrendering that the cops would be corrupt or something like that. Ah, but that's where the intrigue can develop a different direction. And really, at the end of the day, you read it the way you wanted to read it. There's no wrong way. It's Dungeons and Dragons for you. Roleplay game, as it were. You take it where you take it. And uh, this is where we ended up. feel pretty good about that. I had thought the same thing. I was like, oh... He's about to get away with all this. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, I mean, it could have been, it could have, I could have taken it any direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, but I had a bunch of contingencies laid out, and I feel, I feel pretty good about the way the story is developing. I feel really good actually about the way the story is developing and everything. Everything is nice and justified. I don't feel like I'm playing easy mode or something like that. If anything, shit just got even harder. Because oh. you know what? You do can't not feel like this is easy mode. You can't oh, no. I mean, fucking it, it, die out of it because they'll bring you back to fucking deal with it. Oh, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, I sat there thinking about whether or not to stick around and whether or not to reach out to Serena and go and, you know, shit, I'm staring down a knight that's got, you know, what, 40, 50 hit points to the left. I don't even know what the hell the fucking floating bad guy has. It was just. Exactly. Like, I figured we had no fucking chance, and nothing is physically keeping Markham and, Rig and Rigger there other than their compulsion to fight, which I, I, I tried to warn them. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, I do know that I now have definitely 
given that my character doesn't know that anybody else is still alive, my character definitely has a vengeance going on right about now for this crap because yeah. that's always been a thing. Is I, it, it, the background says that I stick by those that have helped me out, and that's it. So now I now I have a you know a bad guy, a nemesis. It that's does fun. feel like we're fighting like you know an ancient gold dragon at level four. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Well, you are fighting a fucking criminal organization or a mercantile, uh, a mercantile organization at level four. Yeah. So there is that. But yeah, yeah. And just just you know putting into analogies like it, it does feel like we're we're fighting like it's David a, versus a, Goliath. Like, there. It's like David I, versus Goliath. Like I think we would have been okay if he just didn't fucking fly because then I could have just rushed him with the cuffs. But, uh, but yeah, he had uh, boots of levitation, boots of flying, I should say. Oh, All right, now now I have a second reason to want to get this guy. He probably had like a ton of uh, magic items in there. Like like it makes sense. Like everything you have, totally makes sense. Is reasonable. Is scaled. But it sucks fighting a. Yeah, just, sorry, boots there. of levitation, not flying. Um, which is just simply you can up in the air and move at what twenty feet a twenty feet a turn. Yeah, we're, we're I, I need to get those. Yeah, they're handy. Aside, aside from my vengeance part, I definitely want the boots. Um, yeah, no, it, it, this this was this was fantastic, man. It was it was great on the edge of the seat the entire time, and um, yeah, it, it does feel like a Jack Reacher film, you know, like he's kind of like the detective, you know, ex cop kind of thing, and. Well, I mean, I will say this: I was pissed that I didn't that I wasn't close enough to grab uh, um, Roderick when, when Markham walked in. When when Markham walked in, because my my idea was to grab Roderick by his hair, put a knife to his throat, and you know, ask who the hell was setting us up here, because I felt like this was a setup. Oh yeah, no, you guys literally went after a fucking shipment and just didn't plan it th thoroughly enough. Otherwise, the odds were pretty good because. These guys wanted to move as fast as they could, so they weren't taking an army along, but they were well in scale. They had as much firepower as they could have. Um, Burgess fucking bit it out of luck. Like, it was, I swear to God, sheer luck. I forgot the cart was coming. He ran where he did, and so I ended him on the sheer basis that it made sense. And so that's me taking an entire fucking cannon out of the game, uh, sheerly because I felt it would be good cinema. You know, so that's that's me. I mean, we I mean we loaded up pretty well. I mean, other than 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 a couple of bad hits, I mean, I thought everyone kind of you know did their did a hell of a job as strong as we could against someone as strong as we were seeing. I mean, we don't have a I lot of goals in order to like load up, right? It's yeah. not like we're pooping magical items. How how much did he have left? Uh, the big guy, like the big boss. Yeah, three hit points. You are the <laughs> king of suck. Like I said, uh, what I said, it's not quite enough to kill him. He's up to 79. He's okay. I also said he was fucking limping at the end. He was yeah. bleeding. I more missed him spat blood. He was But he didn't fucked. miss anything. He, like... Sorry, yeah, he has he six, six hit points. He had six hit points left. Six hit points. Well done. Well no, done. That's, that's, that's one javelin. Yeah. So, there you go. Oh, I used everything I could, man. But, uh, yeah, that's no resistances or anything, and I didn't even use his shield half the time. Like, when you were weapon daggers and shit, I could have just shielded that shit. But, uh, chalk it up to, you know, stress of combat. Even the foot has a tough time. And so, yeah, now, uh, Rotherick is back from outer space. Back with that look, sad look on the opponent's face. Uh, and he brought friends. That is to say, uh, his new, his new friend that he didn't expect, Isaac. His new friends that aren't friends. <laughs> yeah. Isaac, the Eye of the Throne. Nice. Guy who wears glasses. Go figure that. Um, there is one last thing, which is... Uh, XP, I think. No, I gave you the 650. And... Uh, forget, did we get any from last time? You must have got some last round. Uh, we see the, uh, we see a bed, no covers, it's dirty in this room, 
Looks like an old farmhouse, but it's been long forgotten by the roadside. As the camera pans down, or pans out the window and up overhead, we can see Arabelle in the far, far distance. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, Arabelle in the far, far, far distance. Ever so distance away. Ever so distant away. Uh, cutting upon the face of Tomas, scarred and burnt, melted face that it is from all the intense heat of the incredible blast. We see a hand suddenly slap across him. And as he uh, groans awake and looks up, we see the reflection of some large jowled figure who says, Do you know what you're worth to me? You think you can just go and die? Fuck. Then he gets spit in the face a moment later. Cost me a thousand gold. That's just added to your debt. And it cuts to black. That's for Tomas. That's Tomas. Cool. And with that said, uh, glad everyone had fun. We'll see you next session. Um, we'll talk to Emilio as well so we can get him involved. And uh, if you like me, see, I stream every Tuesday and Thursday from 7 p.m. until 10 p.m. with the help of my palette of, uh, with the help of my plethora of personalities that is my palette of players. There we go. Uh, I thank you for watching, and until next time, Mirror 20 is always land on 20. Have a good night, all. Hey, duels, I will uh, find out.